uh, happy Easter, everybody. Happy Easter, happy Easter. We are live on the red. Yeah, my host and my co-host, that is me and my host. We are here in the studio. Uh, I will give my host the mic now, make it talk. We tell us the audio, good thing we'll, we'll get today. My host, thank you. Over to you. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. Happy Easter. Um, good day out there, out there everyone. Uh, like we all know, it's another beautiful day. It's a beautiful, it's a new month. And today, again, you are with us at Upper Reporters on Talk, the program where we discuss and give our unbiased and unreserved opinion on the issues affecting the social, political, and economic welfare of Nigerians home and abroad. Today is the first day of the month of April 2024, and we are live in the studio for our 16th episode or edition. Today, they are interesting ones for us because we have a, we will have a special guest in the house, like we said the other time. We are going to have a special guest in our studios uh, by the name of um, Mr. Ogbede Ifaluyi Sibo. He is going to be, he is the Honorable Commissioner of Digital Economy, Science and Technology. Today he's going to be coming to us in the studio, or today we will be expecting him in the studio to give us details, to give us a breakdown of uh, the development that uh, Edo State has has perceived or Edo State has received. And it's really beautiful that in every social media link or outlet, wherever you are, it is proper that uh, you come with your questions. So this is with a holiday in most part of the world, and uh, the Easter is being celebrated. Everybody spending spending quality time with their loved ones, but still, we have to give it to the people. The show has to commence. I know everybody is taking out time in different parts of the world because uh, yes, this is the time to celebrate. First of all, my my host, uh, our commissioner is here. So I'll bring him off stage now. So he will okay. have to introduce himself. Okay, uh, Mr. Commissioner, I'm bringing you in. We have Mr. Commissioner. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Good evening, everybody. We can hear good you. Evening. Good evening. Good evening. So, so it's, gonna, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be good evening, and it's gonna be good afternoon, and it's gonna be good morning, depending on wherever you're joining from. It is a privilege and an honor to be with you this evening to engage and share some thoughts with you pertaining to my job, pertaining to the government that I serve, and our mandate as a government to the people of Edo State. So I'm hoping that this is gonna be a very engaging conversation. I've had a couple of them, you know, and I'm sure that this is gonna be uh, efficient, effective, insightful, and educative. And I'm ready for questions and criticism. Don't, don't you know, play it easy on me. Bring it hard. I wanna be on the hot seat. You know, that's why I'm here. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Mr. Commissioner. I like the way you have portrayed it. You want to be on the hot seat. So this yes, is sir. the hot seat, and that means you are the right, you are the right man for, to, to, to answer and respond to the questions that will come from people all over the world. Thank you very much. But first, I appreciate, I want to say thank you for coming to the program. I'll say thank you for coming to, taking your time out, your time schedule to be with us. I really appreciate it. And um, I would want to know certain things. Um, first, you are the commissioner of the of uh, digital economy, science, and technology. I like yes, to know. Sir. Please tell us what does your, what does your 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 work 
of uh, position or what do you do as a, as a digital economy uh, 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 commissioner? All right, thank you. Um, I find it very pleasing to answer that question because it's, uh, it is one that has made me really very proud of what I do. And like you said, my ministry is digital economy, science and technology. And to make it easier, you know, for our listeners, you see, the, the digital economy concept is quite a new one in the Nigerian uh, space. And so a lot of Nigerians do not really understand as much what the job entails when you're talking about digital economy. In, in simple terms, it encompasses the entire economy of the state and requests you to add the digital on top of it. It expects you to add the technology on top of it. So my ministry sits in the space of every other ministry, if it's health, if it's education, if it's water, if it's youth, what all we deal with is how do we improve what we're doing in the health sector using technology? How do we digitize or digitalize whatever we're doing in the education sector to make it more efficient? Or if it's about uh, security, how do we use technology to improve our security infrastructure or how we deal with security? So in, in plain terms, digital economy so he's talking first of all about digitizing the entire edu economy, moving it from the analog stage to the digital stage. So whatever we do in that space is referred to as digitization or digital transformation, transforming whatever we're doing from analog to digital, you know? so. Uh, what, what we do as a ministry is to make sure that one, we're improving or prospering the social economic development of the state using technology to create value and prosperity for Edo people. We're also bothered about making sure that we have a digitally skilled Edo workforce. We have 34,000 civil and public servants in Edo state. How can we make sure that our workforce is more tech compliant. How are we making our jobs more seamless? How are we eliminating waste, downtime, corruption? How are we using the digitization of the world today to improve the Edo economy? So my ministry is your God, part, part of all ministries because we sit in everybody's space, you know, and you know, we're, we're bothered about how do we improve? How do we scale using technology? Then the science and technology part is the easy one. Science, innovation, invention, technology. How do we use this science to solve human problems? You know? And so that's a brief, you know, gist of what my ministry does. Um, thank you very much. I like, uh, I like the way you have uh, broken, you have explained to us and given it to us in the in the layman's explanation that your your ministry is the organic matter, matter like we of all every know, ministry. Of all ministry. Yes. 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 Uh, uh, thank you. And um, I want to ask: Is this um, is this is this a new one? Is this a new ministry, or there have been uh, uh, several, but they had to put um, like maybe you had maybe they had to create a major. Is this the first time? Are you the first commissioner of uh, such a ministry or what? Please, I'd like you to emphasize. Okay, yeah. Um, it, it, is, it is quite new, you know. It is quite new in our ecosystem. Well, what this ministry was before was just Ministry of Science and Technology, right? But, you know, with the level of digital transformation we have undertaken as a state, the governor thought it was wise, so you know, let's have, you know, a, a ministry that is in charge of that, you know, whole process. And, you know, at the federal level, too, we now have Minister for Communication, Innovation, and Digital Economy. So we're making sure that we can domesticate, you know, what we're doing at the, at the federal level so that whatever we're doing at the federal level in the digital space, we can also domesticate to the state level. So we needed to have a commissioner that can interact at the federal level with the minister to make sure that you know we're moving at that pace so it's i'm the second commissioner for digital economy science and tech it was created in 2020 
by Governor Basaki once he got into office for the second term. And so uh, I'm the second person holding that office. Beautiful, good. This is, the reason I ask these questions is because uh, <clears throat> we want to pass the, or we want the people, we are here for the people that we want them to know, to have the first hand information because uh, from the previous time before I contacted you and uh, before I reached out to you, I realized that uh, a lot of the citizens, uh, those citizens uh, lack uh, information about the progress or the development in the state. Uh, sometimes it can be misleading when people live outside the country and they don't know first-hand information because they haven't seen or been there. So the things they hear, we don't know the reason why they have uh, negative reviews. They come out and they say stuff. But I have seen you in the previous, uh, in some previous social media outlets and you broke it down and you educated. That was why I said, I needed you to come here to give us a breakdown, a breakdown. Because a lot of people, the previous episodes, people were for and people were for against. It's basically politics. People yeah. always say, Jesus turn water to wine. And people will say, Jesus did turn water to wine. So yeah. because now I want you the for the last three episodes, we'll be talking about the development of uh the development in those states by by the governor uh uh Obaseki. And sometimes people had to score them. Some people came as low as 15%. Some people get scores as low as 15%. I don't know if they have been to the states because I know you are fully grounded and you are an in-house in member of uh, this uh, production or the progress. That is why I said, I needed you to come here to tell the people, to let them know what we don't see. We don't see. So now that you are here, thank you, the digital economy, science and technology, does this cover the cosmetic development in Edo State, when I mean the cosmetic uh, 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 development, the infrastructure, people talk about roads, people talk about streetlights, people talk about security, people talk about, when I say cosmetic, people talk about what they want to see. Does your work or does your, 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 your ministry, does it... Can you say your ministry is a part of this uh, of this model? Do you know how roads are being how how roads are being maintained or created? Because a lot of people complain. Everybody says the street their fathers leave, even if they've been abroad, is still untaught. So I like to tell you. I, also, I like to ask: Does your ministry cover the cosmetic parts like roads? security, uh, power, and um, et cetera, education. Please, can you, can you break it down for us? Well, thank you again. Uh, I foresee this conversation to be a very interesting one. And um, like I said, I would want the tough questions, you know. Uh, it is easy for people to say, oh, you serve in the government, so you are expected to speak well of the government all over the world. There is nobody who serves a government that speaks ill of the government that he serves. And I see nothing wrong in people scoring our, our government 15%. I see nothing wrong with that. That is an assessment based on two things. Based on the information I have, you know, or based on the information I do not have. So when anybody scores 15%, that may be a genuine representation of his facts based on the information that he has. So you can't blame him for scoring that low. He just doesn't have the information. And it was uh, 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 unfair, you know, for it is, it is unfair for any government not to carry the people along, right, in any style of government. Can you still hear me? 
Yeah, of course. We are hearing you. You just okay. put your solo yes, so that everybody can see you. Yes, okay, thank you. Well. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, you, you made a point that a lot, lots of folks who live abroad may not really understand what's going on at home. And that's so true. I lived in Atlanta for so many years before I came here to serve. And so the only way I could get any information about what was going on in a do state or Nigeria was from social media. So I wake up in the morning, it's already afternoon in Nigeria. So whatever is breaking news, you know, everybody has already heard before I get to see it. You know, and so I, I, as a critic, as a critic, I've always been a critic of government. It was, it was easy for me to, to criticize both the federal and the state government because I wasn't, you know, really in the loop of what was going on, right? And so having lived abroad for so long, you come home and things you find out at home are at variance with what you would have expected. After five years, I expect that this road should be tired. After five years, I expect that this market shouldn't look the same way. But you're coming back after a while and you're seeing that it appears to still be the same way and then the government has failed. There's, there's a sense in that. However, we must also take into consideration that in every stage of development, there's a metamorphosis from stage one to stage two. And I, and I want to appeal that those who are listening to me do not listen, you know, with a bias already that he serves in government. I was one of the strongest critics of Godwin Obasaki, and I am still one of his strongest critics, even till today. But the difference is that then I was a critic outside of government, so the most I could do was to write on social media or make videos or rights, you know, on the, uh, the print media. But now, the point of writing or speaking out was to get the government to hear what the concerns are. Not hateful criticism, but positive criticism. I think you've done this. Well, you didn't do it well. You should have done it like this. And that's what I still do today, even as I serve in the government. So when I see uh, uh, policies or programs or actions, from our government, I try to find out, okay, what ministry is involved in this? And I reach out to my colleague. I say, well, I think, you know, we could have said it like this, or we could have done this better. Or I try to have a meeting with His Excellency. Well, Your Excellency, these are the things that, you know, you have done. I, I don't have a problem with it, but this is what I think we could have done. You know, so it's, it's easier for me to criticize now because I am speaking to the ears that will hear it faster and take actions. So I have no, no worries with whatever grading anybody has about our government. And again, we've not been very upfront in our communication. We've not been you know, tagging the people along, giving them updated information. This is exactly what we're doing. This is the road we're working on. Now it has finished. Perhaps because we've not been spending time in doing commissioning of projects. You know, that's one thing politicians like to do. You make it a fun fair or commissioning this school or this road or this infrastructure so people can watch it live on TV. They can see it on social media. You know, it appeared that Governor Gordon Obasaki wanted a different approach. And this is how he has been from the beginning. That was why at the end of his first tenure, his nickname was We Can See. Right, because people were getting to wake up and suddenly you see, oh, that this is done. It's not as if he was talking about it or he was spending money to do, you know, the PR about it, but people were waking up suddenly and they saw things going on. And it appeared that, you know, at some point he ceased. Yes, that happened because there was now a shift in the planning of government, you know, in the allocation of government resources. You do, roads are not the only things that we have to build. Schools are not the only things that we have to do. Hiring of, of, of civil servants is not the only thing we have to do. The people expect the government to affect every facet of the economy. That is what is expected. And all over the world, including where you live, there's a general apathy towards government. People generally do not trust the government. 
people generally feel that those in government are there to you know you know lie to us in some way it's it's how people feel generally so it's not new that some people feel the way they feel it's just that we have not done a lot of communication efficient and effective communication and that is what we are going to be required to do because the people want to know whether we're having elections or not there should be regular conversations or town hall meetings if you like between those who are serving and those who own the power which is the people so but when where that is lacking then there's a gulf in communication then there's a growing mistrust by the people but going now directly to your question we are digital economy science and tech yes but like i said we have an inroad into every ministry so i can tell you virtually about the entire edo economy from ministry to ministry i have regular conversations with my colleagues they have to tell me what they're doing and tell me what the pain points are so we can now add a layer of technology to see how we could resolve whatever the pain points are yes people are talking about uh, 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 roads they're talking about security they're talking about power and education these are all veritable ingredients in, in any in any economy people want to know what are we doing about education you know and so the fact that we haven't done so much about talking that does not mean we haven't done so much on the ground and allow me as i try to share these thoughts allow me celebrate what we have done as a government because most of it is an example and i'm saying this not only as is a public servant but as a critic because i interact with colleagues in other states and sometimes when i'm saying the things that we've done it's looking like what was he talking about and i'm feeling like oh you guys don't do it in your state or you guys are not here yet and to a very large extent where we are in a do state today on several fronts it will take our contemporaries 10 years some 20 to get there and i'll explain Edo State has made significant progress with digital transformation. First of all, we are the only state, the only sub-national in Nigeria to have gone paperless. What this means is that there is no communication within government from ministry to ministry or from outside to government that is done with files. There are no memos that are passed down on paper. Oh, I got my file. I, I can't. My, your file, they miss. You know where, where your file is. Okay, give us, give us something to go bring your file. Or the file is missing. That doesn't happen any longer in Edo State. Because we went paperless in September or October of last year. That means all government interaction is done on a digital platform. So if you come to my office, I'm in the office, by the way, there's 247 power supply in my office, you know? So it was easier for me to stay back here to have this conversation than to go home. And that's because we have improved power supply because we now have, you know, independent power generation in a do state that can power all government buildings. So there's no case of buying diesel any longer in Edo State. Nobody is buying diesel anymore because we have excess gas. Edo State has the largest offshore gas deposits in Nigeria. And so we're taking advantage of that to, you know, get power using our gas. And so the Ostroma power supplies all government buildings gas. Sometimes they could turn off because it's not, it's not uh, efficient. Sorry, guys, can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. There was a glitch, but we can hear you. We can hear you every bit of yeah, what you're sorry. saying. Thank like you. My, uh, my earpiece battery ran out, so I'll be charging it as, um, uh, as we're going ahead. Okay. You know, so yes. we've got papers, like I said, uh, while Nigeria as a nation intends to go paperless in 2035, 
Edo State has already gone paperless. That means there's increased efficiency, there's reduced corruption, there's increased effectiveness, and there's reduced downtime. If the governor sends me a memo, I get the memo on my laptop or on my phone, and he gives you 48 hours to respond. So if a file, right, a mail or a memo is moved to your table, everybody knows that the, that file is on commissioner's table and he has 48 hours to act. After 48 hours, I get a query for not acting on a file after 48 hours. The system automatically generates that query for you. And this is the same across board. So the 34,000 civil and public servants in those states all have a customized platform. It's an ERP platform, an eGov platform where you log in with your details, all the mails that should come to you in a day. You, know, you, you see the progression. It came in from social place. It went to the governor on social day. The governor sent it out the next day. It has come to your table now. So we can we can monitor government processes. You know, and and the progress a society makes stems from the efficiency of government processes. It stems from the efficiency of the civil service, especially for a developing economy like we are. If we can have government processes done efficiently and effectively, it will hamper what we're doing in road construction. It will hamper what we're doing in education because at the foundation, there's a problem. Because every of those other things we're doing starts from government pay, starts from government conversations, right? So what we have done in Edo State is to completely transmogrify or transform how we interact in government to make it more efficient. So we've gone paperless. Number two, Apart from us going paperless as a government, we are connecting all our local governments to fiber. So we have laid 2,000 kilometers of fiber optic cables across the 18 local governments of Edo State, such that if the governor wants to have a meeting with all local government chairmen, you don't have to all run to Benin. He wants local government chairmen to remain in the localities where they, where they should live, right? and have to work from there because the, the case used to be everybody's in Benin. So the local government chairman of Isako is, is in Benin. The local government chairman of Oriomo is in Benin. Everybody's in Benin. So he said, no, you, you can't all be in Benin. You don't work in Benin. Those who you lead don't reside in Benin. So let us make it easier for you to interact with the outside world. So every local government in Edo State today, local government office, has connected fiber optic cables. Edo State own fiber optic, not MCN, not you know any of these ISPs. State owned. While Galaxy Backbone has built or has you know connected about 4,800 fiber for the federal government, Edo State has done 2,000 kilometers. Nigeria has done 4,800 kilometers. Edo has done 2,000. So we're not at the same level of digital transformation with the federal level or any other state. There is no state today in Nigeria that is laying state-owned fiber optics connecting the entire state. We're not only connecting local governments, we're connecting schools. We're connecting hospitals. We're, we're laying a foundation for a smart city where we can have a medical doctor at the Stalabas and Hospital in Benin communicating with a doctor in Afuze and we're having real-time surgery. It's called telemedicine. It is already in operation in developed economies, but now we can do it in other states. So if there's a complicated situation in some rural community where we have a primary healthcare center that has connected to it fiber optic cables, that means they have the internet. You could have real-time conversations with a physician in Benin or in America, having to tell you, okay, maybe you should do this or maybe you should do that to save a life. There is no state that is thinking about this, let alone having the capacity to execute it like we've done. 
But these are intangible assets. So the man on the street cannot understand what you mean by fiber optic cables. Man, I want roads, I want, you know, schools. But in the future, this has the capacity to change the way we interact as a people. Now we can have schools connected and with our Edo Best Program, Edo Basic Education Sector Transformation Program, where we now have our kids all learning in synchrony. What this means is that whatever a child in Eastern Northeast is learning on Monday morning at 8 o'clock, a child in Oredo is reading or is learning the same thing Monday morning at 8 o'clock. And the same thing a child in a remote village in Onwa is learning. So we have a synchronized learning model where every child is taught the same thing in real time. And how this happens is that every teacher has a tab. When the teacher signs on the tab, we get to see it, that, okay, this teacher got to school by 7 o'clock. She picked up her tab from the headmaster's office at 7.15. She started her lesson at 8 o'clock. We're able to monitor the progress of our teaching staff and also monitor the progress in our education system. And we've seen an improved, improved learning outcome across the schools. We're not where we should be yet. Like the case is in any new technology, there are hiccups every now and then, there are bottlenecks. We're dealing with that too, but have we made significant progress? Yes, we have. Do we have to build on that progress made? Yes, we have. So there's no technology, you know, anywhere in the world today that is not being improved on, right? P people are trying to improve on whatever they've done before, we're trying to improve on it. And that's what we're doing too. Yes, we're having hiccups, Every now and then, sometimes the teachers run away with our tabs. We can't find it. Sometimes there's no network in that community. Sometimes there's no power to charge the tab. We have all these little issues. But are these not teaching problems? This is not a catastrophe, but a glitch. That means we could solve the glitch and scale and continue. You imagine what it would look like in the next 10 years, that every hospital in those states is connected to the internet. Every public school is connected to the internet. Every local government is connected to the internet. Every government office is connected. Now you have people hanging around selected spots across the state where there's free Wi-Fi, a state government owned. Now, if you go right down towards Ring Road, towards urban market area, you see loads of cars parked on the road. You see guys in their laptops, they're working because there's internet access. There's free Wi-Fi at that location and we have 21 of such locations across the state if you go to the faculty of engineering university of benin the guys there don't want to sleep anymore because we have, there's free wi-fi where we can engage we can we can create not everybody is using the internet for the wrong reasons there are people who are trying to innovate there are people who are small businesses that need the internet to sell their merchandise now people no longer go to the store to buy things now we all buy on facebook we all buy on instagram we all buy on twitter because we're taking advantage of technology to scale i don't need to have a store any longer in new Guinea. i could sell fruit right on the internet it's happening and so now that we're having increased access to the internet we're having more innovations and inventions of our people we're having more people scale their businesses using technology, right? And all of this is happening, but these are not tangible assets that a lot of people can see. But is this what is available in the developing and developed world? Yes. Most of the shopping malls you go to, there's free internet access, right? So those who are, are foreigners that are visiting, you go to, you know, a mall anywhere in downtown atlanta there's free internet so we're having to get there too where we can have public spaces that have government internet so let me not dwell so much on this intangible right let me now also go to the ones that we should be able to see a few weeks ago we went viral when i had to go to our command and control center to show the world what we're doing to help to improve our security outlook. 
And now in a do state, like no other state, we have an emergency number. If you dial on your phone, MTN or whatever, 739 now, somebody's going to answer the phone. So those who are listening, try it out. Tell your folks at home, dial 739 right now, someone's going to take the call. Hello, this is Command and Control Center. What's your emergency? This is unprecedented. You don't have to like God in a but do you like the fact that when you are in this at any Mr. time of the day, you, can, you can call somebody to talk to? Is that not the way it is in the US, even with 911? 911 call doesn't all the time solve all the problems. Sometimes there's a, some little delay. Sometimes that's the truth, depending on uh, where Mr. you live. Can you hear us? Can you hear, can you hear us? me, sir? We can hear you. Can you hear us? No, we can hear you very well. We can hear you very well. Sorry to uh, to digress or to, to interject rather. <clears throat> the 9739 number, it, you, did you say the 739 number is for an emergency? What kind of emergency number is that? Because we know the, in, in, in uh, various countries, if you call the 911, it's a basic one that, uh, that leads you to the police. But it could be a different one for when you're traveling and you get lost or when you are can you hear me sir i can hear you i'm just trying to connect back to my earpiece i think it has shared a little bit okay yes which is better it's okay so this 739 is it for all emergencies or is it just for emergency on security or emergency on accident or emergency for for certain things that happen around the state what is the 73 what kind of emergency does the 739 number provide okay um i think i got the question um the 739 is an emergency for a multiplicity of purpose for example i think last week or two weeks ago we launched a new ambulance network right because we're telling people if if you if there's an accident for example maybe you're driving and there's an accident while you are trying to find a way to, you know, help those that are injured or so, call 739. There are ambulances in selected areas across the state that we could reach to say, oh, uh, you are on um, Siloco Road, there's an accident on Texas Mill Road. You are the closest ambulance to that environment. So please go there to help. Or you call, somebody is breaking into your neighbor's house. There's uh, uh, maybe a, a threat of theft or some kind of harm. And so you call. In our command and control center, we have all the security apparatus in Edo State presence in that same location. We have the Nigerian Army, the Nigerian Navy, we have the police, we have ESMA, we have VIO, we have road safety. They are all within that space. So if the call is for an ambulance, there are those paramedics that can attend to you. If the call is for, you know, someone has kidnapped my neighbor and you need the police, there's, there's a response that is there for you, right? So we, apart from us having station in that location, all these different security infrastructure, we also have them in, what, how, how would I try to point it out now? Look, let's look at the Benin architecture, for example. Command and Control Center is in Jari. Somebody used at the Koba Hill. Before you leave uh, Jari to get the Koba Hill, something terrible may have happened. So can we have, you know, a section of our, of our apparatus at Ramat Park, for example, so that if someone calls from Agbo Park, somebody in Ramat Park can respond, can we have an ambulance station in Ramat Park? So that if it's, if it's, if it's a health-related issue, or can we have a fire truck stationed at Ring Road? So if the person has to go to a Kenway Road or see local road, or you know, that is what we are now having to transform that into. So yes, it covers a multiplicity of issues. It is not just for security alone. It's a command and control center that addresses all the concerns that could be distressing to any individual. We're not where we should be. We're not at the level of 911 yet, but we're getting there. No, they decide like this too. Even with the efficient inefficiencies they still have, right? Because 
People get to be killed every day in America, even when we call 911. People get to be kidnapped and they can't find them, even when we call 911. So at, at those states, we are laying that security infrastructure as a foundation that we should build upon. We may not be there at the moment, but it's a, it's a propensity to, to scale and to get better, yes. That is one thing that it is not happening anywhere else in Nigeria. So I've had lots of people, governors or, or commissioners reach out to me to say, listen, I watched this video. Can we come to on the study how Edo did it and, and now domesticate that in our states? It's happening. Abia was here last week. You know, all the states, everybody's coming around because this is not what we thought we could possibly do, but we're doing it, right? Even the, the PRO of the first headquarters, he, he, he tweeted that video. He, he posted it on, on social media that, that every state should have the same thing too. Edo has it. We've had it for a couple months, but not everybody's aware of it yet. Right, that's why the sensitization has to be continued. But the first thing is to prove us right or wrong. Let someone call 739. If there's a response, that means there's progress. The response may not have to solve the problem. Like when people said, Oh, you say you have a sophisticated corner control center, oh, but your the, the PDP chairman was kidnapped, you know, last week. You know, how couldn't how, how couldn't you stop it? Well, security infrastructure does not necessarily prevent crime, right? 911 does not prevent crime. The police do not prevent crime. What they do is to checkmate crime, to manage crime. And so it took us a while to understand exactly what happened, but eventually the man was released. We may not have to go into the detail of, okay, how the command and control center played a role, but it did. For the fact that I know that I can call a phone number by 2 a.m. and somebody will pick, that's reassuring that, okay, we're not there, but we're, we're moving in a direction. You know, that's for security. Then the major complaint that most people have is about our roads. And to be very honest with you, I'm serving in this government, but I can testify that we will be required to do a whole lot more in the building or rebuilding of roads. And I've had this conversation with His Excellency in multiple times. I've had to sit down with the Honorable Commissioner for Roads and Bridges to say, this is the general complaint that we're having. What's the constraint? And it is true that in Edo, we're not so favored to have a very nice topography that helps us to have longer lasting roads. Right, because we are we are more like a flat, you know, environment. It's not it's not hilly where you can easily channel water, you know, through uh, 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 um, water channels and all of that. We are more of a flat surface. Most of our water bodies in Edo are full. Right, the Goba River is is I mean that it has overrun its banks, and all the other little water bodies we have are all full. None has been drenched in the last maybe one million years. You know, so that challenge is there. The erosion challenge is there. So if we're spending a whole lot building roads like we should, but we're not able to control the erosion, we're not making so much progress. If also the erosion channels that we should have, we have due to urbanization, we have built our houses to cover this moss. We have built our houses to cover original erosion channels. How do we expect this to happen? You know, but I will give it to the people when they complain about our roads not being of the required standard. Then I asked the Commissioner for Roads and Bridges, this is a general concern. What do you think? He said, because of the high cost of the materials of building roads, one kilometer of, of road today costs us 1.2 billion naira. One kilometer costs us 1.2 billion. It was costing us about 600, 700 million, maybe a year ago. But now it has doubled because increased cost of cement. 
And so the capacity for us to build more roads or more sophisticated roads is dwindling because we do not have the capacity to do it. So if we're going to build a 10 kilometer road, they're talking about maybe 11 billion naira. So as a governor, this is my own thought. Instead of building one Julius Berger or Julius Berger standard road, 10 kilometer for 11 billion, I would rather build 10 of such roads, not to that standard, but to give people access to their homes. What people really want a lot of times is access. They don't want to, you know, have to drive through, you know, rivers to get home. They don't, they don't need the bridges to get home. They just want access. So government has to prior, prioritize. Are we not going to build these standard roads that will cost and go up all the money and we have just built one? Than to build a lot of these roads to open up communities and to open up rural areas and have people have more access to their homes and open up businesses and improve the quality of the lives of the people and creating value for the businesses. What would you rather do as governor? Right? So look at some of the roads that were built by the last administration. Good standard roads, and I will give him the credit. But we're saying that a lot of them are failing four, five, six years after. And the cost of maintenance is almost double the cost of building a new one. And so we're not also going to concentrate only in Benin. Benin is just one of the major cities. There are people who live all across the state who also want to have this road. So Edo State government has built over 1,000 kilometers of roads in the last seven and a half years. They are not all in Benin. They are scattered across the state. And so I live at Upper Upper Siloko. I may not know the road that was built in Jare. No government built roads in Jare in the last 40 years. That's a fact. That there has been no government that has concentrated on repairing or rebuilding most of the roads in the GRA. But go there today, they are all looking Mr. better. But if you leave, uh, uh, Mr. Park, you don't know. Hello? Mr. Commissioner, sorry to interject again. Yes, sorry to interject. I needed to ask a question. Although the audience, they are eager, they are waiting. Sorry to interject. They want to ask questions and they are all eager. What I need to ask, you said the government has built 1,000 kilometer roads in Benin, right? In Edo State. In Edo State. Okay, in Edo State. I wanted to yes. be sure if I had in Benin or Edo State. Okay, so, so hold on, so, sir. Before, before the questions, I'm having a little issue. I'm, I'm a little hard of hearing, you know, and uh, I think it's because my EIP. So can I reconnect to this program? Because initially I could use my yes. earpiece and hear you guys, but now I'm having to strain okay. to hear you because the earpiece is gone. But uh, can you... uh, is, sorry, is your earpiece uh, is it out? Out of is it out of charge? Well, but I'm hearing you better now. I'm hearing you better than your the, the Okay, yes, guy. my host is not using a, a mic. I'm using a, a, a earpiece too. Um, but uh, is your earpiece connected to your device right now? Yes, it is. Okay, sorry, uh, my host. Sorry, I beg. Me and I, as I, I say, but may I greet you first, Commissioner? Now, PG may like to use. Uh, my guest, our panelists want to ask you, you will get some few questions. We could just quickly push them around a little bit because we get a lot more backstage when we're coming through. So I will quickly like make I make I move around. But uh, the first person I will make you take questions from you now, obedient AI. Obedient AI, unmute and make you ask your honorable commissioner uh, your question. Be civil and be nice. If you're not there, I will move to the next person. Obedient AI, are you there? Okay, since you're not there. Um, if I can, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, I beg unmute, make you ask uh, commissioner your question. Uh, yeah, already omitted. Uh, Mr. Isibo, you're welcome. Uh, this is. Uh, I can hear you now. My, yeah, uh, can you hear me, Mr. Commissioner? Yes, I can. It's fine, but I can hear you. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you, thank you. This is uh, this is Kennedy Pai. I know uh, we've known each other for a very long time. Uh, uh, my, my, oh, is echoing. Echoing. Yeah, I think the commissioner yeah, is trying to. Trying to 
to figure it out. If I hold on. Yeah, okay. I can hear you. I can hear you loud and clear. Yeah, yeah. is that calling? Okay. okay. But you can hear now. But it's still echoing. But anyway. But anyway. Okay. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the, the question, the question, the question is echoing. Is echoing. Uh, but hold on. Uh, uh, Commissioner, your device is echoing back to us. Um, okay. Maybe do it the way you want to do it. If you go out, come in again, or the device that they watch us, I think you enter from a, uh, from the stream here. If there's another device like Facebook or YouTube beside you, miss them. So I want to get, uh, get echo from there. Uh, but if your system did difficult, your Bluetooth, if you just go out and come in again, we'll wait for you. We'll keep your space. Okay. Mm -hmm. Co-host, is my mic better now? Yeah, your mic is better. Yes. Uh, is it louder now? It's louder, yeah. Our commissioner is out, and he will come back again. Uh, uh, please, please if bear I will with us. Flow, bear with us. We'll okay. flow first before he come back. Yes, okay. Uh, the question I, I wanted to ask is a very simple question, like, like two in one. Uh, you see the, the rules. He has said, uh, he alleged that the governor has constructed about one uh, one kilo, uh, one thousand kilometers of road. I don't know where, uh, but in Benin, uh, he said across the state where he has a, I think he has a prerogative to prove that. But these roads that were not constructed, the question I wanted to ask is, you see, most of these roads, if they are constructed after some hey, time. Paper, hold on, it's road... back. Okay, okay. Hold on, it's back. Let me bring it in. Uh, okay, Commissioner, can you hear us loud and clear? Okay, good, good. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Isibo. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, Mr. Sorry, Mr. Kennedy. To make everybody have questions and answers, we will do one minute as one minute question, three minute answers. Is that okay? Okay, so no problem. Ask, no ask, problem. He can respond, and others will ask. Thank you, sir. Yes, I want to be. I want to be brief. Uh, I want to follow uh, what the host is saying. Like the roads, you said uh, you have constructed about one thousand kilometer of roads. I don't know where those roads are, but that could be true. And uh, these roads that are constructed, you see that there's no road that will last forever. When these roads are constructed, and potholes, potholes are seen on the roads. Where is the maintenance department to take care of these uh, potholes that are on the road? Because sometimes when I go to Nigeria, I've been there twice this year, I go to Nigeria and I see like a pothole in a particular road. And then when I come back after three months, the pothole becomes wider, it becomes a crater. So where is the maintenance department? Why are they not taking care of those areas? Secondly, uh, if you go to like uh, the main Benin city, like second, third, secular and uh, SEG area and all that, you see broken vehicles parked on the street. That is a lot of money. And I know that you studied mechanical engineering also because you've been to Japan before and uh, the area of metallurgy and all that. So why is it that these cars are not taken uh, from the street and uh, made into ions uh, or metal into ions? And uh, why is it that the, the government is not establishing metallurgical uh, industries that will help the state? Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Um, I, I will start by saying Ohio. Ohio gozaimasu. Yeah, so, um, yeah, road maintenance. Road maintenance. Sir, I gotta be honest with you, right? I see that too, and I and I can't make sense of it. I see a road, you know, a little pothole. In five days, it's something else. In one month, it has become a big issue, and I'm like thinking. But why can't we, you know, address this thing when it's at the pothole level, when it's not going to cost us so much? Then wait till it's not going to cost us millions to fix. And I can't answer the question because it doesn't make any sense to me. But I, I, there's a sense in which we would have to, you know, rejig whatever we call maintenance, not just for roads or for whatever it is. It is not. It is not a Nigerian thing, you know, to want to maintain public utility. 
but we, we will have to at some point because it's making us waste, you know, public funds. If it will cost me a hundred thousand, you know, to resurface a pothole, why won't I do it at the time that it's going to, it's going to cost me five million? It just doesn't make any sense to me. I do not have any explanation to why that is because it's I see it as a very big problem. But what is the solution? You know, sometimes when I go to complain to His Excellency about this, he will tell me that we know what the problems are. You were not hired to tell us the problems. You were hired to, to craft out a, a solution. So go figure out a solution and let us bounce ideas and let's see how it can work. So I'm thinking, can we have, you know, local government maintenance agency? Instead of having one state's road maintenance agency, can we can we cascade into local governments? Because it is going to be easier for local governments to have access to these things. It is going to be connected in such a way that it is called local government maintenance agency, but it's connected to the state ministry of roads and bridges. Because local government will say we don't have funds for that. Yes. So the ministry for roads and bridges still coordinates it, but now every local government and so. At the local government level, we can cascade it to what level? Because every city or every road anywhere in Benin is in a ward, right? And so we have councillors in every ward. So can, can we make it so much more efficient that we can have that model? And I've sold that model to the Ministry of Roads and Bridges. And apart from the issue of the financial capacity, to handle these roads, the Commissioner for Roads and Bridges has adopted that model. Let us have local government maintenance agencies. Of course, we have to bag them by law, you know, but that is not the issue, that's not the, the problem. The problem is that after having them, are we also going to make them as efficient as should be? You know, I think that that that, that starts, it, it starts from there, you know. Then for the ELVs, from the broken down vehicles, yes, I, I, we did, you know, vehicle dismantling you know, in Japan, and how we can make use of ELDs. It's a multi-billion dollar industry in Nigeria. But the biggest problem we have is lack of legislation. In Japan, the moment your car fails the test, your car becomes an ELD. There's a level of an accident your car is going to have, you can't even fix it. It's an ELD because, let me, they're the highest car makers in the world. Right, so it's, it may even cost us more to make a new car than to fix whatever problem you have with the old one, you know. But here in Nigeria, we don't have any suitable laws that gives government the authority to take, you know, an abandoned vehicle, you know, on the road or at the police station. Most of our police stations have become like you know junkyards where cars that have accidents are all dumped there. We do not have a law as a people giving the government the imprimatur to take ELVs so trans and also again we have not also developed you know that technology you know some of us have the knowledge but with the knowledge and there's no technology advancement to back it up there's just much that we can do and can the states you know start that yes you know, and you know, it is easy for those of us outside to, you know, give suggestions so how it should be instead of government. But when you get in, then you understand that, you know, for to have a legislation, it could take you an entire government cycle to eventually have one legislation. Because if you want to take people's cars on the streets that, that have become ELVs, how are you going to compensate them for their cars? You know, so there's going to be that argument. You're not going to just be able to take anybody's car who abandons his car on the road. The car still belongs to him, you know, so there's going to be a back and forth with all that. And I'm aware that we have tried to initiate that policy, right? But it is having, you know, kickbacks because Nigerians are not willing to allow you to have their car just because they can't fix it. Leave it for there. Even if it's in my compound, that's my compound. Let it remain there. But when you try to tell them, this is what we can get, we can even get gold, you know, from the seatbelt compartments of your cars. The man doesn't care. He wants his car there. So it's going to take us a while to get there. But are we happy to be talking about all of these things? Yes. Are we happy to collaborate with, you know, multinationals like we have in Japan? To say, okay, you have this uh, uh, capacity. We can get 
30,000 ELVs every day in a do state. Let's bring in the technology to see how we can reuse and recycle these things, you know, to make more money for the people. And I think we're going to get there. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, uh, my commissioner. I hope he answered your question very well. Ah, uh, no, not really, not really. If I hold on, yes. you hold on. Okay, we'll, we'll, come, okay, we'll come back to you. Uh, I'll make a quickly move. A lot of people, they wait. Uh, obedient AI, you, if you did it on mute, make you ask the commissioner your question. If you're not there, make a quickly move to the next person. Are you there? Yes, obedient can you hear me? You can hear you. Please ask your question, please. In what, one minute. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you so much. Uh, Obede, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity gave us to have this conversation with you. I appreciate your good work. Um, I really want to talk more in the area of uh, human capital development, which is the core aspect of what I'll be clamoring for over the years. Because I believe for us to be able to achieve a better society, you should be able to develop the people living in that society. And one of the ways to doing that is to have stable internet and what light. I'm happy with the fact that the government of the day is laying a fiberatic cable across the 18 local government of the state. And uh, with regard to the power is another issue because I find out that most of all these things have been concentrated only in the south. And much have not been done in the area uh, in those central and uh, do not. And in order to achieve this, I don't know what the government is doing in order to decentralize that power to those states. And in addition to that, I've seen all those uh, innovation hub being um, uh, created, like a do innovation hub and all of that. So I don't know because um, people living in uh, maybe a do central cannot be coming to a do innovation hub to come and learn. People in living a uh, do not to come and learn. They, I don't know how people are doing to decentralize those uh, to those area, because whether we like it or not, we, yes, we need roads. You see this aspect of a uh, digital economy you are working on. See, this is the best I've ever seen in Nigeria so far, because I'm a tech person. I can tell you that I don't leave my house. Everything I do with internet. I talk with my people across the world. We do. Sorry, I make that. your question very brief, a bit quick. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. In this case, please. What are you guys, as in the government of the day, doing in order to decentralize this across the states? Please. Thank you. Know to Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Sorry, I, I question, get. Before. Sorry, question before you move on. Please make the answer very brief. A lot of people are on the back. I promise. I promise. Thank Thank you. You. So, Edo Innovates, you know, Edo Innovates is, is uh, the Edo Innovate is in Benin. But Edo Innovate is just an arm of the Edo Skills Acquisition Agency. We have production centers in Edo Central. We also have in Edo North. And Edo, Edo Innovate also has satellite campuses in Edo Central and in Edo North. So the government felt that it wasn't proper to have it just in Benin. There are people who want to do tech stuff in Isha and uh, FMI too. So it is not as robust as it is in Benin, but yes, we have production centers, not just for the tech guys, but those doing woodworks, for those doing electrical engineering, for those doing metallurgy. We have all those things in our production hubs to sewing, to carpentry, to leather works, you know, all across the state. But can we do more? I think we can do more. Then for the electricity distribution, Oshama Power serves only a few parts of Benin. The Commissioner for Mining and Energy and Power was telling me that the governor has given approval, although some may say it's coming late, but yes, because of the enormous gas deposits we have, there is a power generation plant for Edo North and Edo Central in the pipeline. This is not my information. This is the information I got from the Commissioner for Mining and Energy, and he is from Edo Central, so he's passionate about that. But apart from that, we're also looking at alternative power supply not just gas. We have crazy sun, you know, in Edo State. And what we're doing, the government is, is building 50 solar farms in 50 rural communities across the state. So we plan to do 50 every year. So there was a video I made of the solar farm at Enyai that is powering 100 homes with 247 power supply. 
in a rural community. There's one also in Adurawa that can do 1,000. So we're having to see how we can have these solar farms in rural communities across the state. Not everybody will get power supply from, from our gas uh, uh, generation. Not everybody will get from water, you know? Some people can get, uh, there's a sun everywhere. So everybody now is looking at solar. And yes, we're seeing how we can make that, you know, multiple in more to, uh, communities across the state. Then you talked about the internet and human capacity development. There is no government anywhere in Nigeria that has done as much as we have done in the human capacity. And when I tell people that Edo pays the highest minimum wage in Nigeria, they, they brush it off like it doesn't matter. There are states that cannot afford to pay salaries. We heard the governor of Kaduna State yesterday cry that he cannot afford to pay salaries. For us, Edo has paid salaries and pensions on the 26th of every month consistently for the last eight years. If you say, oh, it's payment of salaries, that should not be an issue, but it's an issue across board, across the nation. Governments can't pay salaries. So if you're having one that is paying consistently, that is pro some progress. We should make noise about it. We didn't stop there. Edo State pays 40,000 naira minimum wage. The national minimum wage is 35,000. Most states like Lagos are paying 35,000. No other state is paying 40, but Edo is paying 40. We're not only paying the highest, we are paying it consistently. That is something good to talk about. And if that is anything good with, for human capital development, Edo State price itself. If 34,000 people receive their salaries and their pensions as at when due, that always also has a way of bubbling the internal economy of the state because if people have money to buy things, everybody gets to benefit from it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, let me move to the next person. Uh, John Bosco, are you there? Yes, sir. Please ask the Commissioner your question. Make it very brief. Just one um, minute, please. We just left his seat, right? No, no, I can hear you. Oh, yes, okay, I can okay. hear you. I wanted, I wanted to get, um, get myself a drink. Okay. Honorable Commissioner, thank you for coming here to talk to us about things that have been happening in the Doe State. And I would like to, I would like you to give us more insight on telemedicine in the Doe State. I hear that doctors in the community, like the Stella Hospital, can consult with other Nigerian doctors in America, the UK, and other European countries to help with diagnosis and other health-related issues. You know, so I would like you to give us more insight on, on the telemedicine that is going on in the state and mm -hmm. other parts of the. If if that is going to go around the whole local government, or is only going to be in Benin City? Well, yeah, thank you, sir. Um, there, there's, there's good news, first of all. Today is April 1st. Was it today? Yes. Is today April 1st? Oh, April 1st, all our primary health care centers, you know, went paperless today. But let, let, me, let, me, let me try and break this down. You see, if you go now to a hospital, you know, to get medical attention. They take your vitals, take your information. And in Edo today now, we have an e-class software that allows us to store that information such that if you go to a different hospital that also has e-class software, we don't need all that information from you again. We already have your medical history on our system because of that software. So if a patient is referred from a, a primary health care center to a specialist hospital, maybe for, for someone needing more medical attention, but the doctors there now are not starting afresh. Oh, what happened to him? Or oh, what, what's his blood pressure? We, we're monitoring it from where you're coming from. So we have now that synchronized data of patients that we can have easy access to their medical history due to technology. I don't think that's happening anywhere else. So for telemedicine, yes, we've made tremendous progress in telemedicine because of our internet infrastructure. For more than that, Edo, uh, Edo State is the first state to successfully have a stem cell transplant in sub-Saharan Africa. That is because of the advancement we have made in medicine. 
The average man may not understand what this means. But is it, is, it, is it true that we're making such progress in medicine? If it is true, should we build on that foundation? And so if a doctor, a specialist hospital, in real time, can see what's going on in the community, because you know, a, a, a doctor there in the uh, primary health center called him on video to say, doctor, I'm trying to treat this person. This is what I'm having. Or this woman is in labor. She's having this crazy contraction. Or we're trying to do this CS and see what's going on. We're saving lives using technology. And we're trying to see how we can do more of that across the state. So if we, if we start with the secondary health facilities, and now we can make sure that in all our secondary health facilities, we can do telemedicine. And now we're cascading out to primary health care facilities. That is unprecedented progress, you know. And these are some of the things that we cannot sell to the average people for them to understand, to the laymen. But for those of us, you know, who can understand the, the, the amount of progress this, this, this means, we should be able to tell others that this is what is happening here. And it is true. We're not faking it. You know? So thank you so much for that question. Yes, we've made that much progress with telemedicine, and we want to do more. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. OK, thank you. Uh, this next question is Tupo. Uh, Tupo, are you there, please? Unmute and uh, put your question to the commissioner. Tupo, you did there? Okay, uh, let's let's move to Uyi. Uyi, please unmute and uh, put your question to the commissioner. Yeah, good Uyi, evening. Uyi, are you there? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, commissioner, um, good evening. You're welcome to um, this platform. Uh, please, I would just like to urge our uh, viewers on um, and listeners on Facebook and um, and YouTube to please um, like and share because the like and share is still very few. I, I'm, I've been I'm watching on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, my question is, uh, um, uh, I just want to ask you about um, employment of teachers and um, this uh, teacher education reform and how how far the government have gone in um, employing employ, employing teachers, especially in our rural areas, um, in, in our rural rural schools, primary schools. And um, teacher education reform, please. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, for employment of teachers, let me let me shock you. The last time a do state government hired teachers was in two thousand and eight. That is the last time there was a mass recruitment of teachers in two thousand and eight. So, from two thousand and eight till very recently, we've had a lot of teachers retiring. But we're not bringing new teachers in. So for about three years ago, yeah. Governor Governor Basaki felt okay. Even if we're not going to be able to hire, you know, teachers to fill in the gaps, let's hire. Is it auxiliary teachers? They call them Edo Star teachers. So he said that you you may not have the the training, the full training of the teacher, but if you have. A, de a degree and you can pass information let us bring you into that circle let us train you for three years within that three years there's some exams you will have had to write some certifications you would have had to get after we've trained you for three years we can then hire you into the uh, state civil service and that's what we did so a few months ago there was a plan by suburb and the ministry of education to hire 5,500 teachers. This is the first time any government since 2008 is hiring teachers. And we already had a pool of over 2,000 Edo Star teachers. These 2,000 Edo Star teachers are not in one locality. They're scattered across the state. So the advice is that if to be an Edo Star teacher to qualify, you must be teaching in a rural community. Everybody wants to come to Benin. But if everybody comes to Benin, who will teach the kids that are in rural communities? So we hired Edo Star teachers and had them to teach for three years. And a bulk of those that we're going to be hiring now in, in the 5,500 sets is most of those who have succeeded as Edo Star teachers. They have gotten the qualifications now after three years and they have been trained. So it's like, you know, hiring people and 
putting them on probation. And after a certain time, you don't hire them fully. That's, so that's what we're doing now. Edo State government is hiring 5,500 teachers. It's ongoing. They had a CBT test last week. Then, for tertiary education, I was discussing with the Honorable Commissioner for uh, Education, and she gave me a list of about the eight tertiary educations in Edo State. And step by step, what the government has done in each of them. I didn't know before that there was no teaching hospital at the Edo University in Iyamo. Now there's a teaching hospital. The College of Agriculture, the one at Igboraki now, has been completely remodeled. But a lot of people are focusing on the issue with the AAU, and it is true. The government feels that, or he felt that, there was a lot of corruption going on in that institution. There were people who were awarded doctorate degrees who never wrote an exam. People who were awarded master's degrees who never went to Ekoma. They never visited Ekoma. They even lived abroad. How can it be? We're not offering that level of technology yet where you can go to school or have an online course for a master's degree or for a doctorate. How come people are getting doctorate degrees, you know, and they never appeared in school? Because a lot of these things was corruption, you know, a, a, a base, so to say. And so he had to, we have to rearrange, rejig, re-engineer this whole thing. And he changed the administrative structure. Let us, I mean, there were parents that were coming to complain about how their daughters were being harassed by lecturers to get marks. What, what parents will find that easy to see that a girl was raped or a girl was assaulted by another man just because she wanted to pass her exam? So that goes on in every tertiary institution in Nigeria. There's no doubt about that. But it was becoming too resplendent at AAU, and the man had to take, take an action. So the, the fact is that every tertiary education in Edo State, so the College of the School of Medicine and Health Sciences, they are building a magnificent building there now. Every institution has been touched. There's a new infrastructure, and not just new infrastructure. There's new personnel in those schools. So yes, you can, we can build new classrooms, we can build new laboratories. What of the human capacity to make sure that those things are put into effective use? So it's, it's, it's been addressed. The truth is that every tertiary institution in those states has gotten a fair share of development in the last seven and a half years of Godino Basaki. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, the next question is Konglu. Konglu, are you there? No, no yeah. lady is asking questions. Sorry. There was a lady in the house, uh, Dr. Owen, but she left. Uh, maybe it's network, it's connected from Abuja. Um, yeah, trying um, to get um, Yeah, um, before Congo goes with his question, on the information you have given to us, uh, Mr. Commissioner, on the, how the government, you say, is uh, recruiting teachers at the, at the, uh, uh, currently, I want to ask, how are these information sent out? Because uh, honestly, I am not, uh, I am not uh, saying otherwise, but I have never seen an application or a link sent out that the government is recruiting teachers. So I want to know how do this um, recruiting process get to the people, especially when we know people try to save data, people get uh, uh, certain information from simple WhatsApp, uh, from simple WhatsApp groups. I've never, I've been, in, I've, I've been in several WhatsApp groups. I've never seen any government uh, recruiting link asking people to apply for uh, teaching jobs. So how does the government pass this across to the people? Thank you. Well, thank you for the question. Let me, let me, let me shock you that we, the government advertised for 5,500 spaces. We got 25,000 applications. That tells you that people, people got to know, right? If we, if we had a space for 5,500, but 25,000 applied, that means to some extent, the information went out there, maybe word of mouth, but yeah. it appears that, yeah. that people got to know. But we may not have done enough, perhaps because we're not hiring a whole lot. But it is true. I, I, on my own Facebook profile, I posted it several times that Suburb, you know, was hiring. I also saw it a couple of times. It, it, it wasn't um, on radio and TV and 
right? Yes. But for the fact that 25 people applied, 25,000 applied, that suggests that people got to know about it. Teachers told each other, you know, people passed the information somehow. Yes. And I can tell you for a fact, this is one thing. You see, God, no, God you know, Basaki does not have the capacity to give you a note to get hired in a state civil service. He doesn't. And so if the governor cannot, who can? Everybody goes, comes into the system through the same process. You must pass the CBT test. Whether you are being hired into this. Are they, are no? they, are they, are they, is this streamlined to all only Edo citizens? Is it only streamlined to Edo indigents? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. It, it was, it was open. It was open. But the thing is that at, at the point of, there will be different stages of recruitment, right? Somebody who's living in Cardinal, for example, you know, and we need a teacher in Afuze. It is easier for somebody who lives in Aochi to want to go to Afuze, that's someone who lives in Kaduna. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, we will have to hire the people who will take the jobs. Yes. You know, so everybody will go for the test and the, the pass mark is 60%. So any person who doesn't get up to 60%, automatically, you don't even qualify for the next round. So even if you're the governor's sister and you score below 60, he can't even help you. Because automatically the system edges you out, you know. So and also we're trying to concentrate not in Benin City because the truth is that we are not lacking teachers like that in Benin City. We are lacking in the more rural areas. So in the hiring process, you, you could maybe you could find that of the twenty five thousand, maybe maybe ten thousand were all in Benin, but we don't need that much in Benin. We're going to now focus more on those in other communities outside of Edo South or outside of Benin, let me say, because Uwonde, Odeon, or their Northeast, or their Southwest, those are lively rural areas where we need more teachers. So it's not going to be in Oredo, Ego, Poboka. It's going to go across the state, but with less emphasis on, in, on Benin City. Because the truth is that we, we have more than enough in Benin. People do not want to go to rural areas, and that's understandable. But now that we're hiring, it has to be the, the preference will be given to those who are willing to live in these rural areas. And there's an added incentive for that because the truth is this: I rather want to stay in Benin where there's infrastructure and there's roads and stuff. So if I'm going to go to Urumi, the person in Benin and the same thing I'm earning in Urumi, what's the incentive then? I'm not, am I going to have to rent a house in Urumi and be traveling? So if I'm going to live there. There's an added incentive to make teachers want to stay in those communities. So apart from us having to liaise with the community to provide some form of you know, reduced cost of housing for these people, we're adding also to what they earn, you know, to make it easier for us to have our kids in these rural areas also get quality education because they have quality teachers. Uh, thank you. Uh, Konglo, are you there? Yeah, I'm very much here. Well, I'll put your question through to the commissioner. Thank you. Okay. Honorable Commissioner, mm -hmm. I'm very much happy and privileged to be in this platform with you and have to ask these questions. I'm proud to know you made mention of the fact that we, we need to come at you and ask you those tough questions. Yes, and I love it. For that. So I would like to go first with the fact that one of your caption or one of the, the print media cap where you were captioned in 2023, when you made fully known that you're not you're a PDP member, but you're an obedient supporter. That's correct. So if if we were to go with that, um, Mr. Commissioner, having to digress a bit from governance, uh, one of the major criticisms that followed your appointment as being a commissioner was the fact that a lot of people felt like the governor was trying to use that position to compensate you, or if, if you might say just to keep you a bit on the low or keep you short for, for a while, so as your criticism against the government will not, you know, will not continue. If some of us want to take that as a fact, Mr. Commissioner Sir, I would like to know, your current, um, your current ministry, 
how much attention is being paid to 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 that ministry because we have situations in the past like for instance in 2014 the governor the then governor governor, uh, governor Adam Ali Oshomole created the department of you know uh, private and uh, partnership for foreign investment and all of that which was never functional but more like a ceremonial um, position just to then favor a man that he didn't want to leave his political party as at then. So that bears me very much concern because I I would just like to know because most of the digital innovation like a big bear that you mentioned previously, we're all you know active, even prior to 2020. So I just want to know because like what like I would not want to uh, you know tag a, a, a another social media presenter that really came after your person so much when you're about to become a commissioner because they felt you were trying to hijack the obedient movements as a way of the governor trying to compensate you in order to like you know get the minds of your obedient followers that so much believe in you so i uh, if, if you. you could get my question correctly i'd like to know i, get, I got it yeah. okay. yes thank, thank you. you first of all first of all unapologetically i have been an obedient i am still an obedient even as I'm serving in a PDP government, the governor knows and my colleagues know that my stand, you know, at the presidential elections in 2023 was not based on my political inclination. Aside of whatever political inclination I have, I subject my decisions first to my conscience. If my conscience would not permit it, I would not do it. And I've always been this vocal right on time, you know, I've always been this controversial. So when there's controversy surrounding what I have said, I said that is what my life has always been. So, yes, I went on national TV on several platforms to say I'm a PDP stakeholder. However, I do not think power should remain in the north after northern rule of eight years. That was my number one grouse with my party. How can we have a northern candidate who wants to be president after we've had a northern president for eight years? Does it mean that we can't have leadership anywhere but the north? Then Peter B left the PDP and he went to join the but and I said it's loud and clear that this is a person I support. I don't know if I will support him in 2027. When that time comes, we will have to check who are those that are running at the time. I'm not a zombie. I didn't support Peter B because, you know, I supported him because at the time he was the best. So in 2027, we'll find out who the best is. And that's who we're going to support, regardless of the party. I'm making this statement today for everyone to hear as a serving commissioner in the PDP government. My loyalty did not reach that level. That whoever it is, my party brings, that's the person I must support. I'm not a fool. I went to school for a reason. I have a mind of my own to decide what to do with my vote. And if I had the capacity to ask others to pull in the same direction with me for the benefit of the generality of the people and not my party, I'll do the same thing over and over again. Number two, the governor did not compensate me by appointing me commissioner. The governor did not compensate or reward me by making me commissioner. I don't see my service to reduce the government as a reward or a compensation. How could that be? It's service. I came to serve. I had a very stable life. I lived in Atlanta for so long before I came here. The, 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 the exchange rates, <laughs> denial to the dollar, I mean, come on. How could that be compensation? It was a call to service. He reached out to me and said, I, I want you to come to contribute in our government, to contribute in our economy for the other people. And I thought about it and I said, okay, I'll come. And it came at a cost. So when you're saying compensate or reward, it's, it's, it's fighting in my brain. And what does it mean compensate? Am I earning more money now than I was earning a year ago? No, it's not, it's not the same at all. It came at a cost. So it is service. It is service to me and not a reward or a compensation. And it had nothing to do with the obedience. I've always been a critic before Peter B joined PDP. I have always been vocal with my expressions. And it's not negative criticism. What can we do better? How can we do it better? So 
if I'm writing to the governor that you've done this wrong, I'm also writing, this is what I think you should have done or what you can do. And he, in his words, he said he found value in my criticism. He found value. And when he told me that, I said, well, this is uncommon for a politician to invite a critic to come join in developing the state. It wasn't about politics now or about interest or about how you feel about me. He know, yo, they say you don't like me, that's fine, but it's not about how you feel about me. I have seen value in you. So can we bring, can we cascade this now into, so all the march have been running all over the place now. Come and serve in government and see how it is. Come and contribute and see how it is. That was basically what it was. So my dear brother, it had nothing to do with compensation or reward. I don't okay, think, sir. yes. Yeah, Honorable Commissioner, sorry. Um, so the part B of my question, so if I'm to go and learn what you've said now or what you've just projected right now, how how much attention is your... I was going to get to that. Okay, the, the mistake, the mistake some of my colleagues of old is, 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 the, is the attention that I bring to my ministry. Is the, is, the, is the value, is the worth that you take to your ministry that your ministry would have. When I became commissioner, what did I start doing? I first of all had to liaise with our brothers at the federal level. I want to see the ministers for science and technology. I want to see the minister for digital economy. What programs do you have available at the federal level that we can benefit in Edo State? The governor didn't send me. He didn't know I went there, but I had to do it. I now went around the list of all the NDAs and all the agencies attached to the federal ministries. I visited their MDs or DGs or executive secretaries one after the other. I'm commissioner for science and tech, digital economy at those states. How can we collaborate so that Edo people can also benefit from this intervention? Because most of them have interventions every year. So the bottom line is that I gave my ministry the attention that it has today. Most people did not know that there was such a thing as digital economy before. I had to bring that attention. I had to bring that to the limelight to let people know that, listen, we can have free trainings for young people. Now we're discussing with MTN. We want to reduce the cost of data for MSMEs in Edo State. We have over 1 million MSMEs in Edo State. A lot of them use the internet. A lot of people complain about the high cost of data. We are fighting with MTN because MTN has the most coverage. Bring down the cost of data. Again, I went to secondary schools and I found out that we had not done a whole lot more, a whole lot in science and technology in schools. We are done well in math and English, numeration and literacy. But what's happened to our labs? So I went to meet the governor. Your Excellency, this is what I've saw. He said, what's the solution that you've brought? I said, okay. It's hard to issue or to deal with government. So let me have my friends come in to adopt these schools. And that's what I did. I reached out to my friends. You can bring in half a million. You can bring in one million. Buy the equipment. Bring it here. And we'll take it to the school. You adopt that school. Adopting the school means that whenever they need any help, they come to you. It's easier for them to come to you than go to government. The government said, I approve that. Whatever they want to, if they want to even build a statue by the school lab to say they not own it, that's fine. Was that a more efficient way to solve a problem? Yes. Are we, now more, are we now putting it out there that, listen, you can adopt a school. Government will not be able to go around all the schools. But with $2,000, you can change the lives of science students in your own alma mater. You don't have to go to a different school. The school you went to, let's refurbish the lab there. We can name it after you and call it to Samudia Me Lab. That's fine. But in the next five years, you're going to help us to make sure that they lack nothing. Now they have WIC exams coming. The students need to have this particular equipment. You help us provide it for them. People turned up. It is hard for people to bring in their private monies into government. But when they find someone they can trust, they turned up. So I've commissioned about three schools already. People are the ones that brought in millions to do it. And we're doing more. And we'll continue to do it to the end of our tenure. The idea is that Attention is created by the individual. It is when you go to meet the governor, Your Excellency, this and this, this is what I want, this is what I want. He sees the value you're bringing in them. The capacity to listen to you is higher. He won't come to you to say, oh, I want to put attention on your ministry. No. What's the quality of your thoughts? 
What's the quality of your ideas? What suggestions can you bring in that we can bubble together to make this ministry more prominent? That's what I did. And that's what every commissioner should do. It's your job, right? It's your job to see how you can improve the taste of your ministry or improve the, the collective economy of the state with your ministry. And that's exactly what I've done. Thank you, Thank Commissioner. You, um, I like the way you 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 try to break it down. Sorry, uh, my, my co-host, uh, Teddy. Oh. I like the way you break it down over and over and over again. Um, in my own witty way, I would say I like the way you are campaigning. And um, I'm a politician. Yes, so, so sometimes I wonder, is he, is he on the ballot or is he going for a second term or he's just talking about uh, uh, the general development in the states? I really, we, we, we have more questions on, on other platforms. We don't know. And is there someone, um, my co-host, is there somebody that is uh, ready to ask questions? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The next question we are going to is uh, uh, Tupo. Tupo, please put your question to the commissioner, but make it very brief. Are you there, Tupo? This is Amir Williams. Please put your question to, to the commissioner and make it very brief. After I don't Tupo, have a question. Yes. I don't have a question. Okay, okay. All right. Okay, thank you. Okay, is there anyone with a question? So, or because I know there are questions from Hello. YouTube. Okay, yeah. yeah hello, I'm here. Yeah. yeah. Good day, my hello. name is Agusa. Um, like hold on, hold on. Please, everybody, hold on. If I don't call you, don't don't put up your mic. Uh, please, just hold on. Uh, Ojenote, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Please put your question to the commissioner in one minute. And please, commissioner, make the uh, question, wrap the uh, answer up very, very fast so we can move around in this people. Yeah, yeah, good evening. Your question. Uh -huh. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Go yeah, good evening, good honorable commissioner. My my question is just, is I have a lot, but I don't think we have the time to 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 talk about it because I am one of the, I am the, one of the people that's, that read government not more than 15%. And I'm sorry to say your government, I give them 13% for all what they have been doing based on your, your digital transformation. In as much as I think the digital transformation is restricted because it doesn't affect the general populace of Edo State, it's restricted to Benin and its environs. Um, but my question is, what is the government doing about the, pri the private school menace in, in Benin City, so to say? Because you mentioned about this collective um, learning where everybody has to start at the same time and everybody has to have, have a curriculum. But our private schools in Edo State, they tend to operate in a completely different curriculum. So what's the government doing about it? That's my question. Well, um, I, I would try to answer this to the best of my ability. I wish my colleague in the Ministry of Education was here. And you're, you're right. You're right in the sense that in Edo State today, it appears that the, the lecture centers are tending to have more of our young folks going there than in the you know organized secondary schools, whether public or private. And that's because for so long we paid no attention to the quality of learning in our schools. You know, so the what, what we're reaping now is what we sold 10, 15 years ago. And so whatever we're doing now. We're not going to reap the benefits till about five, ten years from now. You know, so public schools and government, they've always had this back and forth because they feel that government should not, you know, control them and, you know, they should have their own. But education is education. And if you have to be registered with the government to operate a, a private school, we should know what you are teaching our children. Right, I don't, I'm not so sure if private schools have agreed to have a synchronized learning model, 
but the curriculum is the same for all schools secondary tertiary you know primary the curriculum by universal basic education is the same in nigeria so there's a curriculum for all primary schools but now you now have to tweak it you know to domesticate it as you wish but if that's why when we're writing WIAC exam all students write the same exam if it's NECO, everybody's doing NECO or jam because they are expected to all have the same curriculum so what the private schools are teaching is not significantly different from what the regular government schools are teaching well, the lesson notes on, on how it's been disseminated may be different, but the, the curriculum itself is basically the same. All right, thank you, uh, Mr. Commissioner. I uh, just said thank you for the question. The next question I quickly want to go to is Rosa Olaye. Please unmute and quickly ask a question. And, thank uh, you very much, um, Ogbede. Okay. Nice to meet you again. Um, the question I want to ask, I've sent this um, to the governor like several through different platforms, even up to his... Um, What's up? That um, um, sometime in uh, some some years ago, I went to uh, a Boeing state and saw that the roads are all con ninety percent of the roads constructed by the uh, governor Mai were all concrete roads. Um, going by the kind of um, sand texture we have, that we need to have such kind of roads everywhere in the state than putting quota. Where if rain falls one or twice, it washes off. That we have the um, roads being put with a level of thickness. I although the governor responded on his WhatsApp, but those things were never um, put into use because it's actually disheartening that we we have um, governor fixing roads and yet the roads are failing. I actually drove from um, somewhere in Agbo to GC. It's a lonely roads but the roads were very very okay done by the state government the primary health care there were um cottage cottage hospitals or cottage they were all on solar the schools were newly built with the facilities but you have grasses are growing the the building even with the new things so please, the, put your question please please put your question we have yeah time. my question is what what's the government doing now in terms of um, infrastructure well, thank you. I, I share that view with Concrete Roads. You know, for with the bulk of last year, there was this argument, you know, of let's, you know, since we, 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 uh, uh, we make, uh, produce cement and all that, why don't we have, you know, it done? But you see, those roads built by Umahi, you'll be able to test how durable they are in a couple of years' time. And so, even when he became, you know, Minister for Works, and he said, Do you know what, going forward, President, give me the go ahead. Let all contractors start using, you know, concrete roads. And then contractors said, no, that if you compare the ASU load that we put on these roads, at the end of the day, you have just wasted your money, especially for federal roads. And you know, we Beninis, we are very cosmopolitan and we are like the gateway to other parts of Nigeria. So roads are built for a certain amount of as you load on the road per time. But what we have in Edo State is that, I mean, the, the whole thing is completely bastardized because we have all kinds of trailers passing through Benin and they're on the road, there's traffic. And so you imagine the weight of those trailers on the roads that we're building on a sustained basis. So the point is that uh, uh, contractors did not agree with Umahi that concrete roads were better, you know? and some of our contractors here share the same view too so i'm sure we'll, as time goes on we'll still have to see how we can find out the best model you know i also think that involving the private sector is also an option we have to take let people build roads and own them and tell them let people do it if people come together to say that that camera road we're going to do it from from ring road to gili gili and we'll do it, we'll own it for 20 years, and we'll put a toll. Any person that is passing there, you pay 10 naira. It's a possibility. And that people will bring in their money and we have those things fixed. But who's ready to pay the toll? But uh, I want to ask on that issue. If, for instance, the opposition had done that and um, your government 
which is now in, in place, had come in after the opposition. Why they say is, is it a consensus or a concession? How they how is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, would yeah. Your, would your government not revoke it? Because we know when Nigerian politics is being played. Yeah, it's bitter, it's, bitter politics. The single party. Will no not continuation. Make continuation. That is it. Yeah. But when yeah, the that's a problem. The government, he tries to revoke. Contractors are not completely paid. The roads yeah. are. They have this um the barricades or the extensions and it's left in, in a in a in a in a high state and it becomes a problem. So, so you you, you imagine been... you imagine sir that some of the roads in Jerry for example because there are still big big many of those places you, you imagine that the roads on Oni Street for example is all those who live on Oni Street that put their monies together and got you know a grant from government to build that road. It becomes there. So if they had an agreement with government and a new government comes, it was not a PDP or an APC issue. It's, it's the ownership by the people. You know, and so as, if when things are done in a, on a clean slate and you have SPVs, instead of having government own 90%, let government own 5%. Let the private sector own the most of it. So even if a different government comes, sorry, this road is built by Access Bank. Is Access Bank owned by a PDP person? Or sorry, this road is built by FCMB, <laughs> you know, and FCMB is sitting on it. So that's, that's an established private institution. And I think we have to open up that space because until we do that, government is not going to be able to provide the infrastructure that the people need. We must get private individuals to come in. Let them build schools too. They can own it. It's a government school. They can, they can be paying, you know, school fees, whatever it is. Let us have more private individuals coming to help to build public utilities. That's the way it is in most developed economies. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. Again, Thank you. Uh, there's something uh, I want to pick up. Yes, there, there are okay. more people. More my co-host. My co there's, there's something uh, in, in previous, in previous um, episodes, Someone said, yes, we are going global or we are going digital in Edo, and there's, there are different hubs. But how does this translate to the artisan workers in the state? When I mean artisan workers, you have the vulcanizers, you have the, let's say, the welders, you have uh, the mechanics. How are these people carried along? And how is there a pension scheme for them? Because these people are workers and somehow directly or indirectly, they pay taxes because they yeah. are registrations to keep their businesses uh, afloat. So how are yes. these people carried along uh, Thank you. To, to have a better level? Thank you very much. Yes, you see, you see there's, that's, that's something beautiful that the Berlin Technical College and the technical and vocational industry is doing right now. Apart from the governor having to reinvest in our technical colleges, there are five across the state. If you go to Berlin Technical College now, it looks like a different thing entirely. What he has done there is massive, and he's doing that across the state. But now to the question. The Berlin Technical College is forming an alliance with mechanics, vulcanizers, you know, artisans, especially mechanics and welders across the state. To now have a unified educational system, let me use that word, where you don't just bring in, get a boy, you, he will stay with you for a couple years, and then he has become a mechanic. He, we have to certify it. So if we have the data of most of our mechanics, we have the data of the young boys that they are bringing in to come and start serving them, and uh, with our technical uh, experts, we're also having to give extra trainings to these people and certify them such that you now know that if you go to a Kenway Road and you go to John Mechanics, a just government is telling you that John Mechanics is certified that whatever service you get there is the real service you get there. And when people now say that a lot of people are not going to join mechanics because the man is certified, they now all want to come into that loop. So that is what we're doing now with our technical education. 
to say that because i mean if you're gonna get uh, a plumber in the u.s to come fix something little you you, you before you call him you will first think of what it's going to cost you because the man is certified he's going to that he's coming to your house at all to look at what you have to do you're going to have to pay for it first of all you will fix an appointment with him is when he has your appointment that he will come to you you will pay for him to come and assess the damage before he will give you a quotation of what you, you will do so at every stage the man is seen as an expert because he's certified that's what we now want to start doing now with our artisans in Edo State. It's not going to be Uhuru all at once. But when five mechanics register, then 10 register, then 20 register, and now we're saying to people, if you want to fix your car, go to this place. Then more people want to come into that loop to get certified. You understand? So by then, we are now having to bring in more people into the tax bracket, the organized tax bracket now, because there's a lot of tax avoidance and tax evasion. But what we have for these people in our, in our data center, in fact, let me also mention, let me, let me blow our trumpet a little. Edo State is the only state in Nigeria that has a data center, tier three data center. We are, we are the only state that can keep our data, clean our data, and store our data. Now, Delta and Biasa are talking to us. They want to us to now start hosting government information in our data center. That's also something that we've done. And if you're going to give us 13% for all this mind-blowing number one, number one, number one in digital transformation, only God will judge you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, <laughs> Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you very <laughs> much. I know my co-host I know my co-host has a lot to say. But um, <laughs> yes, if this information are not passed across to the people, there's no way they can get it. I'm waiting. I mean, no. Like you said, sorry, sir. I know you're waiting. Like you said, when you were in Atlanta, Georgia, you wake up to a social media handle and things are being spread around. So sometimes yes. you move with those information because you're not on ground. Now you are inside. You are inside the circle. And if without platforms like this, the people out there, even myself, would not have concrete information. Sure. Ooh, I still wake up, I still wake up, I still wake up to social media to get information because I don't sure. have first time, any first time connection. So I wake up to social media, but I have built myself because I know the social media is a gift and a curse. So I have built myself to to find out facts about what I see online before I can share or yes. discuss. Yes. But it, 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 it's not an easy one. So, but- uh, That's, that's well, why we need to do more of this. You know, now our time is limited. Whatever we say now, they say, oh, it's because of campaign. But these things are there, these facts are there. But the problem that is our fault, right? Not me, because I was not in government all the while. But we, we didn't talk about this as we should have. We didn't make as much noise because the government felt, why should I spend money to commission a road? No, when the people pass the road, they will know that there's a new road there. But really, that's not how it works. You have to tell the people what you've done because... The narrative, the narrative is beautiful. You don't have to... You live in Atlanta. How many times have you gone through a road it was blocked because they needed to commission it? There's a 75 in Atlanta. There's a 285, 285 in Atlanta. Then this road... They get bad and we wake up in the morning and they're walking. The Georgia 400 is being created. So why, why, why is that? They don't commission but, those roads. They, well, well, that, that's true. No, but you see that that economy is way different from ours. Yeah, For example, most, most people, you either have to go through 400 or 285, you know, in a day. Yes. Right? So you always know when there's something going on there. But I live at Upper Sea Local. Those who live where I live may never come to Secretarial Building to see that Edo State okay. civil servants have the best working condition in Nigeria. Edo State civil and public servants have the best condition of service in Nigeria. There is no state that has done a tenth of what we have done in the civil service infrastructure and reforms in Edo State. But how are you going to explain to my neighbors at Upper City Local who will never come here? It has to be on TV somehow. Yes, okay. Right? 
That's why we're here. That's why we're here. Because this is not okay. a, this is going to be a, a platform to promote whatever good. Whatever Call me good. anytime. I'm, I'm ready and available. Uh, okay, but so before, before I go ahead, I beg, on our day YouTube, Mokuna, click the thumbs up, uh, click the like, and share. And on our day Facebook, Mokuna, click, uh, when I follow, when I click uh, follow, like, and share. Then on Twitter, thank you, Twitter, I, I, I really come, come for, uh, come support us today. When I click uh, follow and the heart uh, button, and Instagram, uh, when I click the same like uh, uh, follow button and like. Uh, uh, Mr. Commissioner, we are yes, streaming sir. on six platforms at the same time, including LinkedIn. Probably somebody's looking at your CV right now. Uh, this is a very different uh, stream uh, system that people don't know about. We're streaming, actually it, including uh, Twitch. So six is available for Nigeria and the remaining is available for people all over the world. So people are seeing you different parts of the world at the same time. You're but making me popular, me, thank you. <laughs> but me and I, PJ, I like to use, I quickly want to move forward to the next uh, uh, guest. Uh, Mr. Williams Agbolaho, are you there? If you are there, please unmute and ask the commissioner your question. If not, I move to the next guest. Yes, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, one minute, please, quick, quick, yes, quick. Yes, uh, uh, yeah, yes. Yeah, uh, sorry that I joined very late because of the uh, the, the time change in Europe. So, uh, as at the time you guys started, I was still waiting to to join, and I joined one hour late. I'm sorry, um, Mr. Commissioner. You're welcome. Okay. I have three three fast questions for you. Are you have asked, uh, You have almost answered all my questions. Nah. I'm a strong supporter of uh, Obaseki. They know you. Um, having having a mind of your own. How would you rate this government now that you are in? That is my first question. Uh, and uh, will you will you uh, encourage most uh, some of your colleagues, uh, commissioners, to at least once in a month to join this particular platform to give the whole world, the, the, the public or the, the those citizens, what your government is doing? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, yes, I I would love to have all my colleagues join. And there was something I started doing when I came in. When I saw that there was a lag in communication, so I started to use, I invaded the, the governor's studio, okay. and I would take my colleagues there, sit down one-on-one -on -one for one hour, go on Facebook Live, tell the people what you've done. I felt it was a duty that we, that we owe the people you know, to communicate. And I discovered that some people may be very smart, but may not know how to communicate, especially on, on TV or on radio. You know, so I said, okay, let us start introducing some of these, my colleagues, to public speaking, so to say, right? So let's have, go on Facebook, tell the people, and, and it worked. And almost all my colleagues have had a Facebook Live session with me to tell the people what they've done. And I'm, I'm ready to suggest, you know, that more of them come on platforms like this they may not talk for two hours like we've been talking, you know, but I mean, come to say something because now I'm trying to say something little in every ministry, not just mine, right? But they may not be able to do that, but at least in their own ministries, come on, you know, tell us what you've done, you know, in, in, a, in a social uh, development and gender. You know, come on, tell us what you've done in business, trade and cooperative. You know, I'm willing to do that. Then how am I going to erase this government? I'm going to do, give two ratings. I'll, I'll give one rating with the knowledge I have as compared to other states, as one serving in the government. And I will give another rating as a fair-minded individual. First, as a fair-minded individual, I would rather want to give ratings from sector to sector than to sum it all at once. But if I also sum it all at once, I hope I don't get fired because of this, <laughs> right? If I were to sum it all at once, while we may have had maybe 60% in some or 80% in some, or maybe 40% in some, I, will, I would score us an average of 70%. It's very good. But, but, if I was to grade or rate our government in comparison with our neighbors, 
on every aspect of societal development, excluding roads, I would agree, I would rate us 90%. Because the, the mileage we have covered in every sector of our economy, Delta or Bayelsa or Ondo, they are not even close. That is the truth. So when we go for summits, all commissioners are talking, they're looking at me like a celebrity because I'm telling them that, what is paper? We don't know that use paper in a day. What are you talking about? Meanwhile, some commissioners go outside of the office to go to a business center to print a memo they are taking to government house. They are still at that point where they will first go to a business center to go and type and print, then go to government house. Why on right on my phone, I could send the governor a reply to a message he has sent to me. Not WhatsApp now or true call, but through our ego platform. So we're not mates. And so in that regard, we have gone way beyond. That is why there's nothing the federal government is doing now that we can domesticate in Edo State. There's nothing. Because we have surpassed them a long time ago. Even in health, they're not coming. The Ministry of Health is that federal ministry is coming to see what did you use your class to do in your state? How are you doing this? How are you? This is a fact, not because I'm serving, but this is a fact and it can be verified. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Commissioner, thank you so much. Uh, the, the last person that came to the house, uh, that came in right now is um, Captain Barbosa of Jack Sparrow. Are you there? Is this going to be the last question? No, he's the last panelist, but we have a question from the comment section. My, yes. my wife is going to divorce me if I don't come home soon. <laughs> no, we'll let you go soon, very soon. It's a holiday and we are keeping you out. I'm sorry, but you are, you are, you are, you are keeping it real and you are doing the best that we have uh, put out there. So let's we'll make it fast. Yeah, Captain Babosa, are you there? If you are there, on mute. Yes, if you are not there, everybody. Okay, ask uh, the commissioner your question. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yeah, I think it's, um, basically, I think he just answered it during his last comment because the question was, how can they, how can the government um, sensitize the masses on their programs? So I think he touched on it um, that he takes some of the do the um, Facebook Live and all of that. But I think they need to do a bit more because the narrative out there is that the government is not doing anything. So I think um, perhaps it's an area that they need to look into. And if you have to take a 30 minutes on the ITV or a local station to just do a quick rundown of what the government has done and what their plans are, I think that would really be good. Thank you. And, and also, if you can invite me to other platforms, you know, I'm, I'm willing to participate. I'm willing to, you know, drag my colleagues to participate because it's everybody's job. Because if you have done sorry, so I'm well... Commissioner, I'm sorry. Please, can you promise us that you will send one or two of your commissioners to our, uh, in our direction in a couple of days? Yes. And how possible... Because you're on air. Whatever you say right now, uh, I can guarantee you that I will pass this information across to my colleagues, that they would accept it. I can't have control over that. But I want to assure you that not, not all of them are media shy, like Commissioner for Public Safety and Security. Yes, if, if it parries with his timing, yes, he will come. He's, he's also out there. Commissioner for Education, yes, she will come. <laughs> Commissioner for Communication and Orientation, okay. yes, some of them will show okay, up. Okay, okay. Uh, let your commissioner know that this is a family. We all know ourselves. I know your uncles. I know Chris. I know almost all your commissioner. I know your pam, sex, or my cousins, some uh, family's cousins. So we are all families here. It's upper reporters. There's a reason we call upper reporters. Please tell them to come. Okay. Because we want to know about the achievement. We want people to hear before the campaign yeah. starts. You understand? Because yes, I presume they like to use for me going to use English like this, you know, say what I don't serious. <laughs> so, <laughs> so please, uh, uh, before you move on, one more time, people click like share button on YouTube, a thumbs up on YouTube, uh, a share, a follow, share, and like on Facebook, Twitter, follow the heart button, Instagram. Uh, same follow uh, the like button. 
yeah, Mr. Commissioner, let me quickly move you, answer your question and move you to the next person and you can now start running up if your wife, before your wife uh, come and hold us accountable for not leaving <laughs> you, you know, go ahead, continue. Sorry, I think it was from Captain Barbosa. I don't know okay, if you yeah. lose your train of thought. If you do, or let's just add this guy to it and let's wrap it up and wrap, just take all the questions okay. together and then wrap it up. Let's call it a day. So, okay, I beg, unmute, add the question to uh, uh, Captain Barbosa question. If you have any questions, so that the commissioner just take all the questions because don't deal with us for two hours. Uh, <laughs> so that if you go. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I one small question. No. Oh, okay. then just, uh, your question is finish. I beg, hold on. <laughs> okay, all right thank you very much today today was really buzzing i've been trying to get get into the back studio it's been taking forever uh, finally i got my spot um thank you very much honorable commissioner um my questions are in two folds okay uh, it's about the command and control center right um the question one the first question is um what effect has this been to a new state since since it's you know it started has it reduced security and crime okay do we have statistics to back this up that that's the first question so when you answer that then i, I probably can go on to the next question thank you okay um for, for the much that i know i do not have any statistics to back how effective a command and control center can be the command and control center is about maybe two, three months old. So it is still fairly too early to judge how effective it has been. However, if I am in my house, right, and I know that if there is some form of distress, I can text or call a number that I will get response, that in itself is reassuring. Because there are times where you, you don't know who to call, but then there's 739 or there's 112. It's 739 or 112. I know I can call 112 and somehow somebody's going to hear me. That, that is a step in the right direction. Then it would take us some time for us to know, but do you know that we have security cameras on major streets across Benin? Ikoba Hill, the Ikoba Hill stretch, the Upper Siloko stretch, the Ekema stretch. You know, then downstream road area, the new Benin. We have CCTV cameras in all those areas. So it is that there can be an accident on at Ubowo, for example, and we are seeing it there real time that an accident has happened at Ubowo. And we have an emergency control unit at UBTH or at Usilushel or at Texas Mill Junction. We can easily mobilize them that there's an accident here, they need help without anybody calling. So apart from the fact that people can call, we are also monitoring. And so we are talking also with these internet service providers for us to have cameras on their masks. So in areas where we're not there now, if we can have cameras on several masks, we can monitor these things in real time. That is how security is being managed. You know, anywhere else, even in the most developed societies, we can still see the lapses and the inadequacies they have. But we're moving in the right direction. And I hope that helps with the question. There are no statistics yet. I still think it's still too early. But it is true that we have set up a model that we can improve upon that can help to solve some of these major issues that we have in the state. Thank you, sir. OK, uh, thank you very much, um, Honorable Commissioner. Um, this is upper reporters where where we are very frank with ourselves like um, one of the co-hosts said mr tony that we're a family here all we want is the betterment and development of our state so we try not to gag information we say it as it is um i in your response you said is it's new it started three months ago uh, i was a bit taken aback i'm not bantling words with you or trying to um argue with you but i know that i visited our facility personally myself, April last year, and it wasn't just starting then, it was already running. Um, you can confirm from Wagbale, I was there personally, that was April, uh, not even April last year, April. That is Solomon, the, the Solomon Arasa Command and yes. Control Center? Yes, absolutely, right. And everything was already running, I saw the cameras running, Ubo Bahil, Ubo War, 
you know, all everything it was running. I met with all the D, all the DSS, everyone. So um, it's work in progress. Okay, what we can take from here is for us to benchmark, have you know, statistics so that um, we can know this, you know, um, programs are rolling out if if it is you know um, effective, if it is making sense for our people. Um, I believe that will be something for you to take away. Thank you very much. Oh, okay, just, just, thank you, thank you, sir. Just to add, you know, when when you visited, was it already commissioned by the governor at the time you visited? Because it may have been running, they may have been transferring the equipment they have, but I do not think that as at April it was already commissioned. That's that's what I'm sure of, that the the commissioning, you know, of the commander, like like the seven three nine or the one one two. We didn't start hearing all of that until very recently. You know, they may have had those cameras there then, but I don't think it was operational then at the command and control center. But yeah, I will confirm you. from over Gwali. Yeah, it's fine. It's okay. All right. Thank you, uh, thank thank you, you Commissioner. Uh, my host, back to you. Uh, 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 do the Commissioner have to go to, home? So. Yes, I don't want to keep the Commissioner too long so that he doesn't God bless uh, you. avoid the coming back to the studio. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Commissioner, I want to say thank you for being here with us, even though we are not out yet. We just want to give you your time. It's a holiday. You go you, you go home and spend uh, with the- Won't the I have a, a parents, a parents uh, fee? Yes. I, I, not, nothing for the boys. Yes, no, we are getting- Now you, now you the old, now you the old, old so. now you the old. Now you the old, so. We want to learn from you. You came all the way from Atlanta. You did not ask for dollars. You did not ask for a, for, for a restaurant at the, at the uh, hottest part of the state. And you, give, you are giving your all. There are a lot of people that want to do this. But sometimes, because of, I would say, because some of us, because we don't want to get, we don't want people to think that we are out there for something. We just shy away and try to give our all with our mouth shut. Yeah. Program, you know, if, a few weeks ago, just to call you, my friends were calling me. Are you, are you seeing the exchange rate, OG? You the crazy? What do you say they do for Benin? Are you, are you seeing the exchange rate? You know, and my, 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 I can't, I can't say what my wife was saying because. She was like, you took us from here, here. What, what kind of service you say you're saving, saving the people? Well, not service is one job, but I mean, that was a sacrifice that one yeah. has to make. Yes, yeah. that, uh, that is how we, we are all here to make, we, I believe we are all here to make the sacrifice. We will do all yes, we can sir. to make sure this information goes around and the facts of what happens in our state is being put into public awareness yes sir yes sir i believe after today nobody because various times we talk about candidates we talk about um emergence of new parties and all that deputies but at some point we have to talk about the the current situation of the state we know people can see it and say no it's like this or people speak of what they hear but if we can have someone that will come to us to tell us of the things we don't know now we have all been educated and you have come and you have put some more knowledge in our head thank you very much for coming thank you sir. Uh, thank you i promise thank you. i will keep communication and so that you can be back in the studio as more developments grow for the people yes, to, because as it, as it goes the people need to be updated it's like, it's yes, like a, a system you have to you have to give the people updating so that the people can be more aware so thank I appreciate everything you did. You didn't. It wasn't. You, you deserve a bottle of champagne because you didn't. You didn't, <laughs> you didn't, you didn't Give me the money, sir. Give me the money, uh, please. Uh, uh, sorry, Mr. Commissioner. Do you drink whiskey? Uh, no, I don't. But I want the money, sir. Please. <laughs> okay. Mr. Commissioner, can you just please say something about the the AIO2 campaign? Just share share a light on on it, please. Well, and I'm, I'm going to say this, you know, and I'm going to try to be as honest as I can. You see, Mr. Ashwin Godalo's willingness or decision to answer to the call is a big deal for me. It is a favor, I think, 
that him coming to serve Edo State is a privilege to us as a people. Thank you very because, much. Because those, our dad is one of the few men from Edo extraction that have distinguished themselves outside of here. So when people are hearing us talk about him and comparing him with the others, that are these people crazy? Do you, do you know who you're talking about? Thank That's you. how they, 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 they hear us when we're talking trash about this man. It's a privilege. I didn't know him before now. And to be very honest with you, I wasn't willing to just support whoever God in Obasaki supports. I wanted to understand the quality of his thoughts. So I wanted to take time to listen to him. Because as a man, you know, speaks, then you understand the quality of his mind. When I heard him talk, not even his CV. When I heard him talk, because we could have funny things on our CVs. When I heard him talk, I said, this is the material. And so it is offensive when they are trying to compare him with the other candidates. So be very honest. I see it as offensive, but it's politics, not a leveler, that we're not having to talk about, you know, someone who could hardly, you know, go to school. We're talking, comparing him with a, a celebrated, you know, economist, a celebrated lawyer. What, have we, what do we really want? Do we want to move forward or go backwards? And then you are, you are merging him with an Osaudian Oge. I think it's like Bryce Osaudian Oge. And I'm, I told him before, and I'm going to be honest with you. Until I got to know him. I knew him from afar. Yeah. But when I got to know him, then I said, well, that's how we really misjudge people. Because we really don't know them. There is no politician I've met my entire life that's like that man. There's none. And the first day I heard him talking to somebody about me, I was blown away that this man doesn't, you know, I'm not his best friend, but he has been following me. And for him to speak this well of me, even when he didn't have to, I have to give myself some more credit. That's really, you're not as you know, useless as people make you feel. For this man to speak this highly of you, you get more sense. You know? And so for a politician that is so calm, so meek, so humble, yet so smart, to want to join forces with an Aswe and Godalo, to help us to build on where we are, to move forward, it's a privilege to our state. We should be happy that we have such men. I pride myself when I wear his hat, that this is the person I associate myself with, that wherever I go to, I can speak boldly about this man because when you give him the microphone to speak, he will speak better than I've done. Yeah. Not like those that were afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure he can express himself? Can he really? No, we can't, we can't move from a God in a basaki to what some of these other parties are, are showing. No, come on. Come on. Don't they live life, go back. We are moving yeah. forward and we're making progress. Yeah. Mr. Commissioner, oh, no, sorry. Sorry. Oh, 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 oh. hold on, hold on, oh. please. Hold on, please. Uh, as we talk this thing, so that reminds me. Can you whisper to us when team, not us himself now, he wants his team to come to the studio to talk first before the yoga come. Can you it's respond possible. to them? Very, very okay. possible. They are my guys. Please. Yes, we can. Yeah, please talk to them. We want to. I want them to come to the office because we we have started pre campaign in this platform. So the earlier they come, the better. That's why we want all Pasaki uh, commissioners to come first, so can set the uh, balance the, the stage. Yes. So that when we are campaigning, any bad boys will know where they come from. But no now. Shaking, most, I know if you take side because my school, I'm most a primary school, a nursery school. My school is one side, you know, touch them, but uh, like I talk, we'll be family here. But uh, <laughs> I will reserve them for personal talk. Uh, my host, go back to you again. I I have said it all. I just uh, said that the, if the commissioner, we have to let the commissioner go, please. But please, if you can have any of the, if, if I, I wouldn't mind having Mr. Uh, Dr. Aswe Gudalu on the program. Like I have, I have my own personal questions to ask. Ask, ask him. Yes. Well, and I, I, I don't, please, I don't think. Before Commissioner leaves, can I ask one question? Before you leave, Mr. Commissioner. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, please. Please, can you come during the campaign on this back to this forum so you can talk to us about the campaign? Okay, that's that's too that's too far. If you want me to come in two weeks, I'm here. But again, campaign no, then, starts. When the campaign uh, starts, we want to 
We want you to come Baba, and us start so that we know. Rest assured. Rest assured that I'll be here. This same office. No shaking. I might work. Thank you. If you are part of the program, tomorrow you can be a moderator too. And we will ask yeah. questions. And you can ask us questions. That is how I'll be ready. We are always constant. We are always here. You can it's a family thing, and you are part of the family now. Thank you, Thank sir. Thank you for coming. Please, madam. Um, you have to please. You have to <laughs> and communicate with you after now. You have had two hours of the, of the day. We appreciate Thank you. you Thank, Thank you, you so much. Yes. Thank you, sir. I, I appreciate the platform and I'm I'm willing to have my colleagues come. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much, uh, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, 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 yes. yes. We are back to the full house now. Now we cannot take a recap on the commissioner. Uh, we know we have to be nice and uh, he has to come back and bring other people back here. Uh, there's no need to go political and he just can't tell us which we don't know. Maybe some people know, maybe some people don't know. But uh, quickly, we'll soon round up. We'll just take a recap from everybody then make everybody go go sleep. Okay, my guy host. I carry on. Not too much, sir. We have heard from the horse's mouth. There's nothing, there's no recap on this cap or carpet. We have heard from the horse's mouth. We have said this is why. This is, this is the reason for this platform. We are connected in one way or the other. If you have your opportunity to bring um, uh, an, a, a first-hand informant that can tell us that all, Mr., all the commissioner has said is false, the platform is open. We want everybody to come tell us what they know about what uh, what uh, Edo has got for us, it is quite chill today because uh, some people did not uh, uh, think Edo has gone or Edo has gone this far. He broke down. He gave us two hours of his time, and questions were answered. Well, what can I say? We have the, our, our regular people in the house and our regular people watching on the, <laughs> on the social media. Do you guys have anything to say? If there's anything that you have to follow up, a recap, on the right hand side, please uh, uh, indicate so we, we, we can, we can uh, um, rush things and, and have it uh, uh, ended for the day. Is there anyone? If I unmute. Oh, to... okay. Uh, yes, sir. If I go ahead, okay, sir, Kennedy. Uh, thank you. Thank you. It, it's a, it's unfortunate we there's not enough time to. We would have I would have loved uh, this recap when he was still here, but you know we have taken much of his time. Uh, I wanted to let him know the you know we have all asked questions and uh, he has explained to us. Uh, somehow I wanted to let him know that the governor or the state, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the state government, <coughs> excuse me. The state government should apply uh, the the uh, modalities. Uh, the the uh, what is it? Uh, this president of uh, Rwanda, what he did when he came to office after the genocide, he invited uh, everybody from the diaspora to come and give a solution to to the problem of the country. So he, he put in various areas, like uh, those of us in abroad, we we. We are versatile in so many areas that the people in Nigeria do not have. Uh, if they can invite some of us in, like like that area of metallurgy that I spoke about, or or foundry, or other areas that uh, some some people have uh, expertise in, I think that that will help the state. I'm talking about you know recycling and uh, and other uh, areas. So that's why I wanted to sensitize him with, but it's unfortunately it's not here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, uh, like we like we say, probably he said he was going to. He said he's reachable. It's a good thing we can have a, a a part of the government that is reachable. So when there's a problem, when there are questions, when we need something, there's somebody we can call. Not just send a message to. We can tell him if there's a problem. It's like having. It's like having a. A, 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 you know a doctor that works in a hospital that that uh, uh, you are going to it makes it a bit easier so now this that you have said it's good I actually wanted to ask him a question 
how does the youth, how would you <coughs> put a, a seat on the stakeholder's table? It's not because we want to do the money sharing like it is regular, but because we want to be a part of the system. Being a part of the system by giving our ideas, giving our expertise, and giving our, our, our knowledge. That is it. Uh, uh, again, sorry, 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 Mr. Ho. The question you're asking about these antisans, he didn't answer the question. I think we can keep it for some. some yeah, other time. he didn't answer, but he tried to He gave us a know, bit of knowledge about, yes, he, 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 he actually pulled out that uh, in the pension scheme. Technical because technical the pension yeah, he talked about yeah, uh, uh, sorry, if I if I can come in in that um, pension scheme for artisans, the way it it, it has to be, um, they have to be like a pension law, like where you live, <coughs> like where you live, <coughs> pension is almost like a compulsory. They take they, they take it away from your wages every month. So if you are paying, you there are, there are private pension schemes that those artisans can like engage in. You understand. So if government wants those people to be entitled to pensions, maybe after their business career, government have to uh, make a law that will mandate them to engage those private pension schemes. So uh, because you pay taxes does not automatically mean that you are entitled to pension. Your pension is what your contribution over the years. We uh, uh, if you are like if you are a paid worker. You contribute towards your pension. It's not free. I know government have got their own percentage of uh, with their own part. But for my own, I don't work for government. So I have my pension contribution and the firm I work for, they contribute their own part. There's no one coming from government. You understand me? So if, if, if this pension thing for artisans, I, I think we are asking too much from government. The only thing we can, we can really ask is government should make a legislation that makes it compulsory for those artisans to engage private pension schemes. You understand me? So I think that is what it is. It's not, I cannot cannot envisage a, a time that government will have to dip their hands in their No, but, but if, if I may just add to what, sorry, if I may just add to what you are saying. I don't everywhere in the world do do artisans get pension? I, I don't know. Yes. They will yes, get in the No, 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 no. Uh, let me uh, let, uh, no. let me come in there. Everywhere in the world, artisans don't get pension except they pay Absolutely. pension. They don't exactly. they must pay into the pension yes. for you, you to have get to pay to the pension. So you know, I, I, I work in Nigeria, for example. Uh, yeah, so I work can in Nigeria. I, can I, I, I say something from experience? Can I say something from experience? We, we at least we worked together in the same bank years ago. Yeah. Um, so when I left when I left the bank, I met my pension, uh, my pension, uh, my pension. I will call it pension, but I can't remember what it is. The pension, yeah, pension. That if I can continue the contribution, they said I must be under a paid employment before the before I can continue the contribution. So that was actually why I had to stop. So if there's a way they can say, okay, for artisans that are um, that have a private um, registered company and they pay themselves salaries, they can put themselves as an employee under their company, register themselves under pension and be paying their pensions. Because here, like here in the UK, once you are employed, you already have an um, NI. Or well, you, your NI is already there. Your pension is there. Sometimes your depend on the company you work for. They can even also pay your life insurance. Yeah, but you have to have a, a pension contribution too. You have to have a contribution too. Yeah, you have to have personal and contribution they, and, um, and they top the, it up. And they top yeah, it up. They, they, they can take it out of your salary every end of the month. They, 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 they take it out of my salary every so, month. So just to say, there's 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 a legal framework. Okay. That supports pension in Nigeria, Peter, uh, PICA, OSA knows about that, right? Or any lawyer in the house knows about that. So, is there a legal framework in Nigeria that supports pension? Yes. But besides the government, you know, workers and then the big private firms, a lot of local artisans, they don't key into it. If they key into it, of course they can, their workers can enjoy pension. It's for them to register with any of the PFAs. 
okay, and then contribute on behalf of their workers and their workers, if they want to also contribute, they contribute themselves. So I don't, for, for Nigeria, creating the environment, yes, it is there. It's the individual artisan in companies. Case, I don't even think government can win in this case because it's like, it's like someone that does not understand not what pension is. is. Not You're not asking the person. Yes, from the little observation, or from observation, the little can I just ask that he earns a month, can I ask you, question? you are compelling him to contribute eight ground or five ground every month from the can little. Can I ask you a question? The that, I think artisan, that would be so. That would be so draconic. Oh, you hold on. Oh, you hold on. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. The artisans we are talking about in Nigeria, when they say artisans, and we're not comparing it to the artisans in foreign countries, are they the same? A mechanic in Nigeria is actually not an artisan. He's, he's, he's supposed to be an engineer or a technician. You know, so we, 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 we maybe they can talk about uh, craftsmen like all those guys that do work in the green street. Then you can call them artisans. Uh, so let us not go think farmers are artisans or those kind of things. Self employed doesn't mean you are an artisan. You, you know, so. We must know which one the government of Edo is not calling artisans, bike men, fishermen, farmers, you know, many. Yeah, so so, can, sorry, 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 can I actually, come in? Let me, you know, let me say something. Sorry, sorry, can I come in? When we say, when we say, when we say, before you go, no, wait, 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 please, yeah. let us give the definition. Before we go into other discussions, who is an artisan? A worker in a skilled trade. Especially that one that involves making things by hand. That is it. Making things by hand. That is an artisan. It could be a street market where where somebody does hand woven textiles, a maybe mm -hmm. tailor, a, a a sculptor, or an evening, a a a a a a, 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 a mason. Yeah, I think in, in, in Nigeria, that's where you need to get trade tests. A mechanic yeah, is an artisan. So it's it's training training. Anyone that involves so in those skills, in those two jobs, that, 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 that work with his with hands. Skill with hand. I think a DJ can be called an artisan because he creates music with his hands. It's a skill job. You need to learn it. A job that you need to learn. And yes, and you need to learn the skill. So that those are artisans. Even uh, even to be employed as an artisan in Nigeria, especially in the civil service, you need to get trade test certificates. Okay, I didn't know about trade that. test certificate. Yes, even if you are a bricklayer, you are a mechanic, you need a trade test certificate. Even a driver, you need a trade set trade test certificate. It used to be uh, it used to be issued by um, this employment that uh, directorate of Empl NDE, Nigerian Directorate of Employment, something like that. Are you sure to be good? Don't just scrap it now. Because it has of... always it has always been there. So so what, what me I think is that for those self-employed, okay, let's just call them self-employed. For those self-employed, if if we are saying if we are if we are clamoring for them, for there should be like a pension, uh, uh a pension for them, then there should be a legislation compelling because and no, oh, you, sorry, sorry, oh, you, sorry to interject. You can't just bring out the legislation. There is That's already what I'm saying. the there's already am, the uh, Pension Reform Act. So anything relating to pension comes from that act. So it's not no, something what I'm that, is is that No, what I'm saying is that, what I'm saying is that, you see, pension, uh, like here, I can decide to opt out of pension. You yes, there's, a, what, there's an act that gives you, there is a law that gives yeah, you that right to opt out. Yes, that's what people so don't understand. I can decide to opt state. out of pension. Yeah, it's not for the state to decide. So that compel there them. Is a, it's not for the state to decide who pays into pension or not. There is a no. Nigerian Pensions Reform Act that um, directs how pension is done. And it's not every uh, company that pays pension. I think you have to have a number of employees before you can pay into pension. Okay. So there, it's not regulated. Perhaps uh, is it, we is need it, to look is into it, that. Is it voluntary? First of all, it's not taxes. It's, people, people want to misconstrue the, the taxes for pension. Taxes, so pensions, I think if you have a certain five. amount of employees, yeah, so you, I think it's yeah. either 15 or 18, I can't remember which now, I'm trying to crack my brain, until you have that number, you cannot even uh, uh, pay to contribute to that pension scheme. So there is, there are laws guiding it. Maybe we reserve this so that we don't just start 
shooting blanks so, and looking yeah, through it and then yeah, but I know that some skins, but yeah. I know that there are some skins that if you and you're an income earner at all, you can start contributing for life after work. Yeah, that's, that's, your, that's, yeah, that's, that's your... That's the way they do it. The reason why I say that, that is... Let me tell you why I say it. this. Yeah, the reason I say that is for my own self, because we are not up to... Um, I think it's 15. We're not up to 15 in the firm. So when we um, reached out to uh, a pension provider, uh, PFA, Pension Fund Administrator, so they advised that, look, since we don't hit that amount yet, there are other ways we can... Uh, uh, um, look into pension, so I perhaps need to uh, look up my conversation with the. Wait, PSA. can I can I can I say something? I think where yeah. the problem is is you see, like in foreign systems, the company itself, whether it has a one man employment or two men employment, has a business number that automatically identifies its employers because it paid tax, so it automatically deducts tax from its employers to pay. At the end mm -hmm. of the year, yeah. like like normally now, if I'm working somewhere before they give me my salary, no matter how small the company is, they take the tax with their tax calculation using QuickBooks or whatever yes. tax system they are yes. using. Because the business yes. itself, at the end of the day, we fight tax of its own staff members. Absolutely, it's the same. Yeah, absolutely. So, the, so the, same. the way it works like that, in that tax deductions and everything, the pension is deducted based on your your maybe in US SSN number in can and maybe. UK, whatever number that number is your yes. official number because without the necessary, yes. you cannot really enter into a tag bracket in US, I guess. That's, yes, that's and before you get that code, before you get that code you're talking about, there are uh, uh, regulations that you need to meet. Yes, and, and, the, the, people, and is, the good thing is that yeah. those their numbers are tied to their lifestyle because that's the same number they use to check whether you have a job employment to give you a mortgage or to give you a car. It's the same, so yeah. All because those things are tied. I don't think yes. Nigeria is that No, no. Tied. It's I don't the know, same. Not really if, you have, to, if you have a, a, a PFA, if you have, maybe you work with um, a, a selling bank and then uh, you have a PFA, pension fund administrator, and then you move to uh, Lokoja and you're now working with uh, Nigerian b you can move that your pension for to that place so yes it's the same you can move yeah, but that's the difference here yeah, because like you're saying now you are the one individually moving it from one place so you can end up as uh, maybe your pension account will be with stambic ibtc but i don't think no no it's the like same that. so no no so because yeah, yeah, it's automatic I've, well, I've moved, no job. i've moved my pension i've moved my pension like twice now oh, okay yeah i've moved my pension like twice and i can even decide not to not to pay pension I can, yeah, you my cannot always, pension. They always send me an email to let me know that I can decide to opt out if I if I if I'm not feeling comfortable paying pension. You understand me? Because are, you, they, are you a full time job or a contract job? On the full time job. Oh, okay. That's yeah. how it is in, in, in England. You can and opt they, out from pension. Yes, you can opt out, you can decide not to contribute. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you'll be shooting yourself in the foot because when you yes. get old. You get to that. I think it's not sixty-five years. Well, the US There's nothing guys for you to tell us more about their four hundred one k. Now, can they opt out of the four hundred one k if you are working? Yeah, I think well, you apart, can. Now, you know what? Apart from your pension contribution that you pay, you cannot decide to now engage one of these. Um, what do they call them? That you can be contributing every month towards your retirement, so or when you, or when you are out of job. Them. Yes. Yeah, you, but what you, you then do is you lose the government contribution towards your your pension yes you lose the government contribution pension because you you you're going to be paid like okay, okay but you've been sorry, paid a long how does this affect what we are discussing before now because it seems no we're not talking about they were talking about completely no they were talking, talking about, about pension for, pension so for self-employed <laughs> yes i think the first thing is this eh? i think the first thing is this if you are not you don't have up to that number of employees you cannot even opt into uh the pfa into pension in nigeria because I know we yes. could not go in there because we're not up to that um, 15 or 18 number. So that's the, uh, uh, number okay. one. Uh, the two, now, now, sorry, if you now have... The yeah. is, sorry, now the government is paying... Uh, I think the government said they were paying a certain number of people, 5,000, 5, whatever, you know? So how will they know exactly which people should receive this 5,000? Because I can have a job that is maybe self-employed and I'm earning serious money with it. And my name can just fall into that bracket where we end 
five thousand for free from the government for six months because they don't really have a database. I think, I but, think in those states they have this um, tax ID for yeah, every so because, employee. Because Even saying, myself, I work. I worked in the east then, yeah, well, same and um, I, I, they, I they, worked they, in they the east. Am I? Once you can identify the individuals with an identification number, which Nigeria has created name, BVN, voter's card number, if you can, if you can identify individual, like now you say the state has its own tax ID or whatever ID. Yes. Have, you know? So if I'm working in Lagos and I have that ID in Benin, I can still take that money for free now. No, you can't work no. in Lagos. No, you don't know. That's not possible. Like, if you like work in Lagos, was... eh, so, you have your so... tax ID with the Lagos State LRS. Yes. If you're working in Benin, you have your Edo State um, LRS. And if you leave your job in Benin, it will show that you stopped paying pension a long time ago. So these like things what? are not um, um, like... you know, too difficult. If they are See... going by the data they have, Okay, like what, I was, like what I was doing then okay, when I was working in the East. Mr. J, it's like the topic is changing though. I think I, have, I need to go now. Yeah. Okay, guys. Okay, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can go on our own personal time to make researches about pension. Yeah. Can you take us that stage if you still want to talk? Uh, yeah, but... Uh, the, the moment has come. Mr. Host, Mr. Host, can I say something? I'm very yes. happy that uh, we. Uh, this is a milestone for upper reporters to have the commissioner on the floor for uh, two hours. It shows that uh, we are making progress, and I'm very happy that this is happening, and we are going to hopefully see more of this during the course of the uh, during the course of the election, and after then, further more for upper reporters. So congratulations. But however, I know I didn't want to say too much because I need to say something. I didn't ex I didn't see the discussion or the platform as a place where we come and throw banters or argue about what the commissioner is saying because it's it's it it, it, it will not tell where about the program going forward. And normally when you give when you call it as somebody and or to host the person like that, you should allow the person to say all. Oh. And if Fact, fact checking should majorly be done by the host because if we want to do fact checking from our own side, it will make the program become very rowdy and the commissioner might not uh, uh, find it easy, especially when he's holding an office. You, we must respect the fact that he's a commissioner, he, he's serving us, he's not serving only PDP, he's serving the full state. So it will, be, it will be wrong to come online and start trying to argue everything the commissioner is saying. They make it very watery and maybe maybe make up our reporters kind of like a setup, you know, for any person coming in future. So, however, there were many things that were to be called into question. I'm only saying this now because you might wonder why we do not call some things into question. But I'm giving you the reason why we cannot do that because as you give a platform to somebody, you must allow the person express the person self. And by the uh, fact that the person is holding an office is not something of an argument, neither is it a debate. So going forward, when we want to give some other people who's who have the platform like that to maybe interact, ask them questions, let us rep, let us give them that same level of preference where whatever the argument is, you should not spirit out of control. Uh, what I, you know, because I know many people asked questions, the questions were answered, they were okay with the question, but they didn't want not that they were 100% okay, but they didn't want to go for that because at least to give the, the program a level of decency, you know? Uh, oh, because... I don't think they were trying to give the level of decency. Uh, no, no. Uh, I don't know. Know. Uh, no, no, no. Guys, yeah. guys, let's not, let's yeah, not, but, let's but, not go, but, let's not go on this one. Okay. Can we take this offline? Wait, 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 wait. Watch this program. Let's take this offline. Let's take this offline. Let's take this offline. No, if I agree with Tupo. I, I agree with Tupo on this yes, because I was I going to push with, back. I, with I felt we didn't have enough time and no, there will be back and front. Back. I, I was trying to avoid that question. back and front. Guys, uh, let's take this offline, please. I agree no, with no, Tupo. you guys can do that. Left, 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 what left. Saying, left. What I'm saying is this. What I'm saying is this. A commissioner comes to tell us about what he does or what he has previously. Uh, knowledge about, and you expect me 
e mo gjeto tu da teli ta tiktok shu ta di vur dis kilometra pa do ta va na ha ki ba ha mo me a o teli he was here to answer questions if his questions were not correct it is a record i will go back i will do my fact checking and again when i see him i will go back to say this uh, okay okay uh, mr host let me say one thing before, before we go from that let me say this mr host just let me say this you see there was a there was a, re, a reporter that uh, mr k did on the commissioner yeah. it, it, it actually threw him off balance but mr k actually just tried to withdraw the cushion so that he doesn't make it are you going to speak for mr k mr k no no i i'm only no. saying that yes wait now listen no. mr k said it yes because mr k yes. has knowledge about it yes if i have knowledge about something and a person comes to tell me what i i i i know i would be like yes there's no problem i'm not in an argument but with this what i'm saying is that when other people come to the platform no, you know what has come. Are you talking about us making the information? Mm -hmm. Are we still on? Are we still on? Are we still live? If we're we live, let's live. end the program. No, no, let's end it. Let's end it. Let's end it. I'm not coming here to. This is not for anybody. We can discuss this on. We can discuss this outside the program. But there's something. For you to arise and to talk about what they told us to check it. There's something I want to contribute to. There's something no, I want no, to there's say. no contribution for these contributions. No, no, there's no contribution. No, I just, I, I just want to touch on. Hold, hold on, Uyi, hold on. Good night, good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, good night. <laughs> no, I, it's not about this. It's not about this. What What I wanted to say is that yeah, when we invite some, like we invited uh, the commissioner, he's got his own of uh, his own uh, portfolio or, or how i don't know how to call it we cannot we cannot be asking questions about roads we have commissioner for works you understand me so i think that going forward we should if you are if you are inviting the commissioner for education i think we should ask we should let our questions be within that education sector so that when the commissioners are speaking they are speaking about what they can actually defend when they're talking about what they can actually defend i have asking the commissioner for um, uh, uh, about, um, about mr Uye, and... i think we should do this offline host if you want to close yeah the... let's do this offline we yeah we can we can yeah we, let's we can end the show offline. and do we take it offline host oh, yeah we can offline, offline. but we still making a point okay, an engineer a doctor's question the doctor's question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, okay, we get that. Yeah, okay, okay. Thank you. Oh, so let's end this. Yeah, let's end this life. Then we can continue. Yeah, yeah. We are here. We are not leaving. We are here. Okay. okay. Thank you guys for coming. Let me round okay, off my you. part. You guys can continue. Let me okay. thank you guys for coming. And uh, we want to thank the commissioner most especially for taking two hours of his time to come to tell us what he knows about what he does. Or whatever the, the development in those states. I want to thank you too, you guys, the offline guys that will come and go offline again to deliberate. You all, thank you for coming, Mr. Uyi, Mr. Kennedy, um, I think uh, Mr. Tupo, Sake, uh, Mr. William, uh, uh, Mr. Dion, Captain Babosa. You guys are awesome. The guys on social media from I think uh, the co my co-host said they have six uh, six media outlets, which is um, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and I was shocked when I had LinkedIn. Twitch so and uh, LinkedIn. Okay, uh, okay, good. So you guys do the awesome thing. Before I round up, I will say my proverb. My proverb today is this: the brain is a terrible. Okay, the brain is a terrible thing to waste. Which means whatever, whatever information you get, there is some bit of education in it. Whatever information you get, there is a bit of education <coughs> in it. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you for making it. Also, give us our own time to see our proverb now. No, no, don't say your proverb. This is your village. <coughs> Thank you. Good night. You marry a monkey you because of your wife. You go meet your wife. Monkey will remain. Yeah, you go meet your wife. The commissioner will come to meet his wife. 
Tomorrow, the government will pay him. Today, we are here uh, for more. See you guys on Friday. Adios. God bless.